So okay. welcome to the town of Deerfield uh, Select Board Board of Health meeting being held this January 12th, 2022. Uh, the time now is about 6.04. The meetings normally held at the municipal office are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of open meeting laws, the Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television. Okay, the remote access for this is, uh, phone number is 312-626-6799 or 929-205-6099. And the ID is 911-604. 1580. The passcode is 570012. Uh, to uh, access Zoom, uh, go on to the Town of Deerfield website, click on the uh, select board uh, meeting, and the Zoom address will come up. So uh, now call this meeting to order. Okie dokie. Is everybody there? <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you, Dave. Okay. Um, I'm going to switch switch locations to see if I can get a better reception. Okay. Um, we could start off uh, while Dave is doing that. Casey, do you? Um, I know Kevin can't be here tonight. I'm getting up. Um, oh, you. Oh, you did a fast. Hello. Wow. Yeah. Casey, do you want to? Um, Touch base on what Kevin was discussing. Yep, I can touch base on what Kevin and I were going to bring to you. And so here's what we need to do. We reformatted, as you know, in our job descriptions into new formats. And we took the certified operator and the chief operator to personnel board on Monday and had them review it. And so you'll see they're revised. We would like both Kevin and I would like you to approve those revisions as presented. They have, we had gotten some input from the engineering company on them. Yep. And so we want to make that transition, not only for uniformity, but also so we're clear about what the expectations of the positions are. Mm -hmm. um, we've been very happily um, experiencing a good response to our reach out for applications. Um, so we'll start working on those. We have gotten some, we'll start sitting down. He and I are going to sit down and talk, but right now it would be helpful for us to just have this in play for mm -hmm. accuracy. And the next thing besides that, just as a quick overview is an operational service contract with the town of Amherst. So would you like to go over the job descriptions or? Bye. I've read them uh, today and I, I feel comfortable with them. I, I talked to you a little bit, uh, Casey, and I, I think the only concern I have, you showed me where it was covered. So I, I feel pretty good about them. I'm happy to listen to you know, anybody else want to pine, opine about them, but both of them look good to me. So I'm, and then was, we can talk about the other. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say I'm fine with them too. Did you have any questions, David? on the job descriptions for sur for the wastewater treatment sewer? No, I've looked through all my, uh, I'm happy. I'm, yeah, I'm happy with what I saw. Okay. Uh, both, yeah, yep. the chief operator and the operator. So I'll, um, I'll, I'll make a motion then to approve the- The uh, only question I had is on the operator position. We had talked when we advertised it that if somebody didn't have the license, we might be willing to train. We did advertise in that manner. Um, one thing that's in both those job description and in most, if not all of our job description is descriptions is okay. the ability for us to use a combination of education, knowledge, training to to, to fit the qualifications we need. 
And so Kevin did go through both those job descriptions and look at the grade levels of licensure. And what we did was we made a change particularly to the certified operator to, I think it was a grade two, if I remember correctly, I don't have the job description right up in front of me, but I will find it. Um, I think as a grade two, we wanted to give ourselves the allowance to bring somebody in at the lower grade and train up. Yep, it says grade two or, uh, or higher. Yeah. Yep. Originally, I think that was a grade three, but Kevin and I talked that through. Right. And so we did the minimum for the chief operator, I think is grade four, right, Trevor? Uh, yes, I believe. I'm going to open that while you guys talk. So, uh, I think it would be really good. Yeah, three, to to five, uh, three to five years. Yeah. I think it would be really good to offer anybody in town that you know seems to be really dependable, good person. I mean, this is an everyday kind of job, and you got to have be on top of stuff. So, I I mean, certainly investing in the training is not an issue for me. Um, for. And having somebody live locally, I think, is especially yeah. in emergency is really important. So, I, I mean, I'm open to that for sure. Yeah, it is grade four C or above. And, and I think that's the requirement because is. there's also a time in a time of, of training and experience that's involved. Yep. You have to, it's like an apprenticeship kind of right. thing. Right. You have to put right. a number of hours. I forget what the hours are, but there is required hours. Right. Yep. So we were tr trying to capture those. Yeah. Those thoughts and requirements. No, it looks good. I, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve both the uh, chief operator and the operator job descriptions for the wastewater treatment department. Um, Carol, uh, Carolyn will second. I think David's got a delay, so. Or he's frozen. <laughs> Cal. <laughs> I think it's an excuse not to participate, Dave. Come right. On. He just takes a picture and then he <laughs> and then he goes away. <laughs> uh, so, um, oh, I think yeah, I think we lost oh, him completely. Gosh, so, lost. Um, so I think so. I'll just any any further discussion. No. All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Okay. All right, and um, we'll see if we can get him back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you want me to go on to? Do we want to wait until we see if yeah. we can get David back? I think so. If we could maybe just a couple minutes to see if we can get get right okay. on. Um, is there? Um, is I, I'd really love to have him involved for sure in the discussion. Do you want to, Carolyn? Do you want to talk about uh, COVID nineteen while we're waiting? Okay. Or, well. Um... Oh no. Good. <laughs> oh, David back. <laughs> kind of action sweep. Is I, he I, back? I, I don't know. No. I, yeah. Well, okay. Not um, bad. <laughs> so, uh, Sunday night, Alex called me and um, said that the sequencing came back uh, for two cases in town. That um, so Omicron is here, and um, so we had our emergency meeting on Monday, um, and we put in uh immediate zoom meetings for everybody um because it's the omicron variant um although it, it is uh i mean hopefully everybody will get boosted uh vaccine and boosted because it seems like the people that are most affected are the unvaccinated or the under vaccinated and we the goal here victory for us is to get everybody vaccinated and boosted so if you go home and have the sniffles, you know, that's it. Every, and you get on with your life. So um, unfortunately we don't have everyone vaccinated. And um, so we're trying to keep our town operations going. And so we have um, by appointment only to um, the municipal buildings. And we're hoping that People will take advantage of our Vax bus here on Friday and get vaccinated. If they haven't been boosted or they haven't had any vaccinations, please come. There are a few more openings. And um, we're gonna have a, a Vax bus again here on February 4th. So please take the opportunity for that. But in the meantime, we're um, mandating masks in municipal buildings and for municipal employees. And 
I was hoping tonight um, Dave would and Trevor and I would be able to discuss with Alex um, a mass mandate townwide. I think, you know, we can review this every week. We can go back to the mask advisory. The main argument against the mask mandate is that, um, you know, you're always going to have people that are not going to participate and not do it right. And we get overwhelmed with complaints, but also, you know, it's hard for employees to confront, um, you know, people that don't want to wear a mask. And certainly if it's a minimum wage job, it's really tough, I have to tell you. But on the other hand is I think not having the mask mandate is confusing to people. And I think temporarily, and we can review this every week, but temporarily it would be far less confusing and the message will be much clearer if we honestly just have a townwide mass mandate. And so I was hoping we'd have a discussion about that and um, you know, maybe be able to do that uh, tonight and just extend the mass mandate from you know, municipal employees and in municipal buildings to townwide. I don't know if anyone has any questions. Our, our numbers are hard to follow. Um, I just want to explain what happened. We had excellent plans and relationship. I mean, I'm constant uh, calling back and forth and communication with all our private schools. But when the kids, you know, um, they were required to have a PCR test before they came to campus. Um, about 80 kids from Deerfield Academy um, tested positive before they even got, you know, before they were even in transportation to the campus. So those kids stayed home. Um, the kids, other kids came on campus. Um, there was about 50-ish or, you know, or so kids that tested positive. 35 of those kids went home. So they were not on campus. And then uh, of that, there's probably around 50 that are quarantining, but of total population, there's only about eight kids that are not um, vaccinated. So, and, and it's a requirement to be vaccinated and boosted if you're an employee there. So, you know, it, they, the numbers, it impacts our numbers because part of some of those kids use their Deerfield addresses as the reporting address. So it came through as our numbers. So the, it looked like that week of you know the first couple of days of January, it looked like it was craziness here. But Eagle Brook, you know, they again being very safe, went to New York, made sure no one got on the school van unless they were, you know, had a negative PCR. And you know, three kids, four kids had to go home, and um, you know, and then had three cases, you know, and two of them were our you know local kids. So. Um, I, I have to say, you know, the schools are doing everything they can to keep their numbers down. You know, they're down to single digits, couple, you know, a day, a few things. Our numbers have been pretty steady, but we know Omicron's here. So we're going to see more cases. And I just wanted to explain to people that it, it sounds awful. It is awful if you're not vaccinated, but um, we can get through this. And so not, not to be panicky. And when we're talking about mass mandate, it really is reflective that it's a very transmit, highly transmissible variant versus the original Delta and the original, um, you know, original um, uh, COVID-19. I mean, there's Delta Plus and there's Delta Plus Plus and there's all kinds of other ones. And there's this new Delta Chrome, Omicron one and, but, what we're seeing here now is the edge of a new blast. And I hope it's truly just a huge surge and then it goes back down. I, I don't have any other information than that. Alex, do you wanna add anything? Yeah, um, I, everything you said and uh, in regards to the Vax Plus, uh, we have uh, 409 individuals signed up come Friday, which is, uh, Fantastic, um, working uh, with the Vax Bus, uh, the Vax Bus coordinator uh, in the schools, and um, it, it's going to be really good. And uh, uh, in regards to Omicron, yeah, it's here in in Deerfield, and you know we just have to be prepared. And uh, 
And I think that it is a good idea that we do have uh, the discussion uh, for what we can do for town residents and for uh, Deerfield uh, activities as well. So, um, David, back, I think. Uh, are you there, Dave? He looks a little frozen again, but not sure if you want to go back to that. Um, mm -hmm. Go back did to you, the. Did you have any questions, Trevor or Dave? Do you have any questions about? I, um, I, you know, I still. I don't know. I have um, have some reservations about doing a town wide mass mandate, but um, curious to see what David has to say, I, you know. Um, you know, I think the the large, obviously the large bike we had yeah. was was very school related, and um, you know we know what that is and where it came from. A lot of them didn't come here, but they were tested and they're here because they're Deerfield kids. Um, so um, it, it is a you know it's a it's a lot of work for staff to be going out and monitoring all of these stores and making sure people have masks on. And I mean, I think it's. Um, it's good to send the message that people need to be wearing masks, and I think that's kind of what we did with our with our town mass mandate, um, our town building mass mandate. Um, you know, I I don't know, I don't I don't feel strongly in either direction. So, if Dave, I'm curious to see what Dave has to say about it. If we can get him. <laughs> He's, oh, he's here twice. He's double frozen. He's um, double frozen. We did get some messages that I sent to Carolyn and to Alex on our Facebook page. And it seems that some people in the community um, have been saying that they would prefer to have a mask mandate because that would help them. Mm -hmm. um, it, instead of them saying you need to wear a mask every time they come into their business, yeah. it's, it, it's some protection for them. And I mean, that's just what I'm conveying from their messages online. Sure. Yep. Um, Dave, maybe you can call in and I, I would like your opinion on this. Hmm. David, try turning off your video first and checking the audio. I want to see three Davids. <laughs> yeah, I'm, there he I'm is. having all kinds of trouble here, so. Yeah, we hear you good now. But he may still have a long delay. Yeah, maybe just calling in would be would be yeah, okay. Had all kinds of trouble here with my reception. I don't know why. I'm yeah, just, I'm only getting half of the conversations. Right. Yeah. Do you you want to just try and call in? I just stopped his video. So see if you can hear us better if your video is off, David. I can hear you. Great. So. All right. I, I'm not getting just... a delay on you right now, Jennifer. Oh, good, because I turned off your videos on. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Oh, okay. So I'm not a pretty you... picture anyway, so, you know, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard, uh, I mean, have you heard the conversation, David? Are you interested in doing a town-wide mass mandate? Uh, or do you... I think I'm kind of more inclined to just, you know, have it highly recommended for our businesses uh, if they so desire to have the mass mandate they can but um i don't really think we need the mass mandate throughout the whole town right now but that's just my opinion mm -hmm. I, I, I was I know just a number of people want it i was just worried that it was a mixed message and that if we were willing to review it on a weekly basis and, and really relate it. I mean, I, I honestly feel very strongly to make um, data-driven decisions, but I think the fact that this is so highly transmissible that and wearing a mask and socially distancing does have huge impact. Um, you know, it's just basic public health. And if, and if we um, do this for, you know, till our next meeting say, and and if that we and if nothing really comes of our numbers, then you know we could meet in between, 
uh, we certainly go to enough meetings. So to have a, you know, a 10 minute meeting to say, well, we're just going to go back to the mask advisory. My, my thought was just that it's a mixed message when we really need to be preventative at the moment. Well, the, you know, I guess my, my feeling on this is that, um, you know, it, everybody knows what to do at this point. It's uh, whether we put a mandate in or not a mandate in, it's not like this is new information and people don't have any idea what to do. I mean, they know to get a, put a mask on right now. It's not, they, everybody it's, you know, not watching the news or whatever knows there's this Omicron going around. And I mean, I, I I just wish people would go get vaccinated. I mean, if you're vaccinated, you're okay. Um, you know, you may get sick, but you're not going to be in the hospital. Um, there's just extremely, extremely low cases of people who are vaccinated that are in the hospital. So, you know, I, again, I can go, go either way on this. I just, I just want to make sure that like, it, it's a lot for people to kind of then force people to do. And then they, they, but if it gives people cover, I'm happy to do that too. I just, want to make sure that um, I, I don't know that it's saving lives at the moment, right? Everybody has had enough time to get vaccinated. They know this is a, a this is not, you know, two marches ago where we're, we don't know what's going on. Uh, people are smart enough to put a mask on. And if they aren't, then, you know, that that's really, they, they should by now. I mean, I, I don't know how else to educate you any further, but then to then force business owners to do something. Uh, but again, if it gives people coverage, I hadn't heard that from Jen. So if, if, if they'd rather that, I, again, I, either way, I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference either way because- There's, There seems to be quite a few people that are, are liking the comments anyways, that are saying that it just helps the businesses out. But mm -hmm. um, Alex does have his hand raised if- Yeah, and others too. Yep. Yeah, I see Kathy too. And Lily, Alex. Denise. <laughs> Go ahead, Alex. Hi. Uh, so I, I, I think um, I think it's so I, I saw the comments and uh, it looked like uh, there was a, a restaurant there saying that they require a mask as well. Um, I think that's it's interesting because when you go to a restaurant, you wear the mask, you order the food. If you sit down and take it off, then, you know, it sort of defeats the whole purpose, you know. So I think it's I think it's interesting. I think that, yes. It's a, a it's a good idea to um, you know keep looking at the, the data and the research and, and see what effect uh, the this mandate will have. I think that um, it's really important, but I think that we also need to just realize, as what Trevor mentioned, I'm a one you know it's, I'm only one person you know from the board of health, and it's it's. It's something that, uh, you know, we have to consider with the number of complaints and then going out to, um, you know, by law, you know, required to uh, follow up with every complaint that I receive. And I think that we just, uh, I think we just need to uh, continue looking at the data and understanding uh, what positive impact that will have and what difference a mandate uh, will have of an advisory versus that of you know requiring individuals so recommendations versus requirements and looking at um what the business owners are currently doing as well so i i think that's just a an important factor as well yeah and my feelings on it right now is with the mass mandate if we did it it's it's going to just be a confrontational type of things. All the intelligent people that are out in public are, have a mask on. So they're just, the business owners are just going to end up in some ways fighting with the people that don't, just won't wear a mask no matter what we do. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but you see it all over. You know, I work in Northampton and, and they have a lockdown, but you still get a lot of people and a lot of confrontation about the mask. Well, um, how about we just keep an eye on our numbers? Uh, I mean, I know Kathy and Lily and Denise had some comments, but I mean, the suggestion then would be, you know, watch our numbers, I guess, and, and you know, be willing. To, I mean, I'm so appreciative that you guys, both of you, David and Trevor, don't have a problem meeting at the drop of a hat and 
we'll just watch our numbers, I guess. Um, yeah, if Alex, you know, if our numbers are suddenly spike, you know, besides what we saw the last week or so. Um, yeah, I'm fully in favor of it. Um, I mean, we definitely have more numbers, but that big spike was related to kids not even being here. It was just they used right. Our, yeah, they used the Deerfield address, not. I mean, right. they weren't actually even in town. So mostly Deerfield. Um, yeah, yeah. So you know, I, I already am seeing the numbers uh, starting to plateau <laughs> so far. So it, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Any other comments? I know Billy was Billy next. To say something. Yep, Kathy, Denise. Yep. Hi. Um, a, a couple of things. One is that um, you can be practically symptomless and come down with very bad long haul COVID symptoms that um, that last a long, long time, regardless of your age. My daughter has a friend who had nothing had COVID but felt nothing and now has no sense of taste. Um, so the, the, the impact, even if it's a minimal infection, can be long-term and severe. The other thing is that masks are to protect others. <laughs> and I know it's hard because I agree these people, they're, what else can be said? But the job of Board of Public Health is to protect us from those stupid people, I think. Um, and so I, I, and the other part is I do think it really helps local businesses if they can put up a sign that says, you know, per the order of the Board of Health, all masks are required. And then if they, they understand whether or not they are stuck enforcing it, Right. I, I mean, and I totally understand it is an awful situation, but I'm just, I really, we know that masks work. We know that COVID will have really horrible repercussions that are not always death, but, and they can be in any age. And so I would, um, and I also do agree that um, it's a lot less confusing message because it's like, so only the people in town hall matter to be safe or something and it doesn't matter in the rest of the place is kind of what it, it sort of felt like when I saw that. Anyway, thank you. Um, Denise. Thanks. Yeah, two, uh, two points. I think Carolyn, when you said go week by week, if you're gonna do mask mandate, I would recommend you just do a mask mandate for the next month because I think it's more confusing going back and forth. But I found that, you know, in Greenfield, when they did that and just reading the paper, I think it was very confusing for people. Um, you know, another thing is that I, I don't think it's true. I mean, I, I've signed up, I've got way too much information, but a boston.com uh, coronavirus website that I get results every day and, um, Unfortunately, in the state of Massachusetts, there are hospitalized patients, 3,087, and ones who are fully vaccinated, 1,452. So that's half people in the, half the people in the hospital are fully vaccinated. So, you know, I'm just not sure whether, you know, just because you're fully vaccinated does not mean that you're safe, that you, can, you, you won't end up in the hospital. So that's my, my two cents. Plus, my husband tested positive and he's home and he has, he had sniffles for a couple of days. He feels fine, but you know, we're, we've both been quarantining. You know, I haven't hugged him since, I don't know, Sunday. Feels sort of weird living in the same house, but anyway, that's, that's but my. Not only are you vaccinated, you're booster, Denise. I oh mean, yeah, I both of us are. And we wear masks all the time and he has absolutely no clue where the heck he got it. So, so that's it. Your husband? Yeah. Kathy Sylvester, sorry. Oh, thanks. I think a lot of what I was gonna say was said and I agree with both Lily and Denise. I just would add that, you know, we're trying to flatten the curve. The hospitals are fracturing right now and everybody's gonna get this virus. It's just inevitable. We all know that um, at this point, it's just so highly contagious. I don't think you can avoid it, but 
we do want to try to slow the spread and it's a responsibility of the um the board to uh, at least try to help that a little bit it's not our responsibility to make those people that don't wear masks more comfortable um, they're putting me at risk i don't want to shop in town because there's not a mask mandate here and i feel very uncomfortable going into cheslick's now or my husband went to the auto store the other day we like to shop in town but i don't want to do it right now and um because i don't feel like I'm being protected by those people not wearing a mask. And that's your job is to protect all of us, not to, you know, listen to those people who don't want to wear a mask. I'm sorry. They, it's, they're wrong. <laughs> you know? Uh, it, yeah. I'm not, I'm not listening to it. I right. just know I've seen the arguments coming up and it's, uh, and some of it's not pleasant. Uh, oh, it's not know, a pleasant I time for any of us. doesn't wear a mask can, I know, and I honestly I, believe not wearing a mask in public is stupid, because I wear I mean, a mask in public all the time. I um, work, you know, um, I work in a congregate so. care setting, and those people don't want to wear masks, and we have a COVID outbreak like never before. And I'll tell you, they got religion now. They're wearing their masks, but a little bit too late. And I, you know, people are ending up mm. in the hospital. You know, I have family that work on those front lines, and they're getting slammed. We have to help them. I don't care if it only helps keep five people out of the hospital. That's our job, you know, right now. This is a pandemic. We need to respond as though it's a pandemic. So what are we talking for data? Like how many cases, how long? That's been the struggle for me because we haven't had a mask mandate in Deerfield when everybody else did around us and our numbers were just the same. I mean, we're a little bigger community, so we'd have four or five, something like that. The big spike here was Deerfield Academy um, mm -hmm. or public schools. I mean, the, the private school to just because people coming from all over. It's not just because they have a great plan. They're right. responding very well. It just happens to be that they came from all over the world. Um, back or didn't even come back, but got tested and used this address. I just, you know, again, I'm not um, against it. I just, I'm just trying to figure out what what are we doing here? Like, how 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 long are we all going to wear a mask for? And does it have to be mandated? Or at this point, don't people have enough, you know, knowledge to wear it on their own? Or like us mandating you to wear a mask isn't going to do anything. They're you know, they're just, they're already going to be either wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. And I'm not here to make them comfortable at all. I'm furious. It's been forever that people ignore and ignore the science. Um, so, I, again, I, I mean, I just want to see enough data that it makes sense to go through and do all of that again. Well, um, we're in the middle of a surge that they expect will really start to drop in two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. And I think that you know why wait for our numbers to go up to me it's like it's all around us the evidence is all around us are we going to wait until our numbers go up before we react or are we going to listen to the science and and follow what the cdc guidelines are which yeah. is everybody should have a high quality mask now you can't tell them that to go into a right. store but when i go into a store and they the people that work in the store don't have a mask on sorry mm -hmm. i'm not going back there yeah, I think that's really that not keeping us safe. And I think that's what the Board of Health has to do, you know, is keep us all safe. And yeah, we know better, but those people are putting us get at risk. And if you're a child under five, mm -hmm. you can't get vaccinated. And if you're an immunocompromised, your vaccine is probably not protecting you against hospitalization, as Denise said. You know, these people are vaccinated. They're in the hospital. They're mostly probably elderly people and immune compromised people and mm -hmm. kids under five. Right. Um, how about how about we make a mass mandate uh, and we review it uh, in our next meeting, which on the 26th, which is on the 26th. Mm -hmm. And um, we we don't I mean, we can't vote tonight and make make it effective tomorrow. So right. how about we make it effective on Saturday? So, you know, people will have an opportunity. Um, you know, Alex will can go around to businesses and talk to businesses and let them know. We can send out emails. Alex, do you have a suggestion? 
Yeah, I was just going to say, um, going around businesses doing food inspections uh, just in the past, uh, you know, a few weeks and, you know, going to other businesses in Deerfield, I've noticed uh, a really good compliance uh, around 96% of individuals that I saw, including business operators wearing a mask and their staff and the customers. And so I think that, um, I think again, you know, just seeing the data, what impact this is going to have uh, is going to be really interesting. I haven't seen any data uh, from surrounding uh, towns that, you know, if there's a, a mass, you know, mandate that it's, uh, you know, decrease the number of COVID cases. If, if anything, all towns are dealing with uh, a huge surge across uh, Massachusetts in the country. And uh, people are doing their due diligence and wearing the mask. But those, you know, 3% of individuals who don't wear the mask, I think it's going to be um, a really, um, it's going to be interesting how uh, the Board of Health will uh, address those, um, popul you know, those percentages. So, um, <clears throat> okay, so I, I guess if you, if you, if you feel like you want to do one until the uh, Casey, you must have a comment on the implementation or having something. Written yes, up, but, I yeah. do. We don't have language from Council yeah. to put a mask order in place. Yep. We would so need. Well. So I would hesitate to to vote something without parameters outlined, okay. because if you'll notice we got comments back from council about the municipal mandate because we had right. to provide some some allowances for alternate face coverings right HR. so it, yeah. it is it doesn't just snap your fingers happen we need to be very careful and mindful that right. we're observing people's rights well we can meet again so if you want to put something together i'm happy to get together well if we tried to put it in 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 place for saturday we don't have time to post for that all right. Have a meeting on Friday. Oh, no, but we had a mass mandate previously. We can certainly, there are other mass mandates in all other communities. Alex can give you a mass mandate from Northampton or Greenfield. And it still has to be gone. Council still has to review it. It's fine, Casey. They can review it and get back to us. We can vote the mass mandate to be effective on Saturday. And then um, if there's any issues, then it can be extended to Monday or something like that. But it, we had one previously, so we could just dig out the other one that we had. It was legal before. It was, but interpretations with various agencies like ADA and OSHA play a part. Yeah. Well, Alex can check it out. Catching the medical exemption is is was a good, good um, catch on um, our legal counsel's part. So, Alex will write something why up. Why don't we write something up and then just meet on Friday? Or I don't know if we have Friday or Saturday or something. We like don't that. have time to post for Friday. Post for Monday. Can, can you, um, Casey, would it be something that you could take a vote saying upon approval from council? Yeah, just like we so, did. So take a vote saying, you know, and then if we don't get approval for it to be effective Saturday, then it would have to be effective what Monday. Tuesday because Monday we're closed right Monday's Monday we're closed oh, Tuesday. Monday. Oh, that's right. Monday. yeah Monday we're closed for the holiday which Jennifer and I keep forgetting about <laughs> I mean, that's why I keep I trying to like please don't say come into work Monday just don't come into work Monday I have a meeting so you hush you <laughs> um I think I'm just concerned about the parameters so what I would what I would suggest if the board wants to implement a mask a townwide mask mandate that we get the parameters, coordinate the parameters and language between Alex and council yeah, and have yeah. Alex execute that on behalf of the board with their authority. That's what I would suggest. And that's fine. And that's fine. Effect and give a couple days lag time like Saturday right. or whenever. Would this take effect uh, Tuesday the 18th? Because mm -hmm. you're going to need a little time. Because I'm. They, they will need a little time, Alex. That's true. And I'm going to have to, uh, you know, work with our businesses and inform them in, in such a way where, you know, we, we won't, you know, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, that's fine. Okay. If that's the best we can do. I mean, if they know that we're, it's coming, 
then, you know, that's the best we can do. Yeah. And I'm not too worried either, you know, uh, I, again, there's a, there's a really high percentage of compliance when it comes to mask wearing and, you know, social distancing when they can. So they're still doing that, you know, added public health layers. Uh, this is just um, a better preparation, uh, you know, for all businesses and, and, and giving a little heads up for uh, the, the community at large as well. That's all. Well, again, I'm just appreciative of not the mixed message. And again, we can back off if the if the mm -hmm. fact that case numbers, you know, spike and then go down. Okay. Alex, Mr. Chair, through you. Alex, um, so. in terms of messaging, if there's a time period on this, like Denise said, is that going to be less confusing? And I ask this question simply because I want to be clear for the message to council. Well, also, I don't we're know if review it. We're yeah, we would review it. it on the 26th, you know, and then again, yeah, the I, meeting. I would say, yeah, well, the mass mandate would go into effect for the the remainder of the uh, month of January. Mm -hmm. And then we will review it on the 26th to see if we carry it into February. Right. Because you don't want to take it off if there's a huge spike going on and you won't know until then anyway. Right. It gives us a couple of weeks to look right. at the data. Yep. Should I bring up uh about the revised public health order that we discussed our, um, you know, uh, the emergency public health meeting that we had on Monday? Yes, that's a good idea. Okay. <laughs> um, one of the things that council had put on is uh, the medical exemption. We had not included that. However, I would like to, um, council had recommended face shield and I would want us to um, remove the recommendation of the face shield and just put in um, CDC guidelines um, as, as where to reference, because um, I, I, I am not a scientist expert, but I have to tell you wearing a face shield is useless. Yeah. All that does, I mean- that's Blow it out the side. Yeah, that's blood splatter. That's, that's if yeah. you're actually doing like body- food. Operation. Right. The, and it actually exasperates what is happening because you're breathing in and out of a tunnel, more tunneled place. So you actually have more velocity going into your lungs, breathing in and breathing out in that face shield. So you know, you that is know. from a public health point of view, we need to um, make sure that that's not in our order because yeah. that, I would, even I would say that is a poor public health choice. They did keep that. Uh, so now it is uh, saying in accordance with the Centers for Disease Control guideline. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Because at least a mask kind of catches your your breath and not like blowing it out the sides and underneath. I mean, the face shield does nothing but keep then, spray out of your you, face. Right. And then you bring it in and the velocity going in, it actually goes yeah. Yeah. So, oh. I could just think about like a, a septic tank with the T's or like someone welding, you know, just protect, yeah. you know, protect. Right. You know, so, okay. Um, so, I don't know, poor Dave is having a hard time, but so all those in favor? I, Carolyn? Of, of what? Of, of which one? Wait, wait, wait. yeah. Of, of the, yeah. Um, which, uh, the, well, the think, order? Let's go with the uh, mass. Mass mandate until the end of uh, January first. Okay, we'll based, do that based vote January. first. Let's vote on that one. But that and that's based pending on approval, pending approval and format from from Casey and Council, correct? Yes. Right. That's correct. And if you need us, Casey, just call us. We can have an emergency meeting, run back and look at this thing. If if for some reason something's dramatically different than what we're intending, Alex will work on it tomorrow. Okay. Do well. I can I can buzz council too, yeah. which I plan to do. Um, do you want Alex to sign off on that, or do you want the board of health to do? We want, do you want us to use the stamps of the board of health once it's a final order? Uh, stamps from board of health. 
think I think the stamp support of health is is helpful because you know it shows that we're supporting this. We're not just yeah. making poor Alex be the you know. <laughs> So is the motion to enact a townwide mask mandate through January 31st? Yeah. Yeah. And we will be reviewing on January 26th. And it's effective on um, January 18th. And, I'll, and I'll, I'll work on it and I'll send it to you, Kate, okay? Okay. And I also just want to make a um, just mention that Alex was wonderful. He went down to, there was some confusion because um, our senior center, of course, is temporarily at the church. So um, Alex went down and um, just talked to people today at the senior center so that um, all activities were held in a safe, full, safe and um, good yeah. atmosphere. So I want thank to you. say thank you, Alex. Yeah, thanks for doing that. I got feedback that it went really well. And everybody was, you know, really happy with the turnout. Yep. But a few people getting food, which was great. Yeah. But it was really good, you know. People all wore the mask, you know, social distancing, you know. I helped get some chairs and some, you know, additional um, tables. So, yeah, yeah, it was it was a good operation. So. Yeah. Okay, I guess all those in favor, right? Or is that what you? Yes. Uh, do we have a second? Oh, sorry, I'll second. Do we have a second on it? I'll second that, David. Okay. Who made the motion? Uh, any further Carolyn? discussion? I made the motion. Yep. Okay. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Sarah McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolf. Thank you. Okay, so the second one then is to. Um, Reapprove the order, Alex's order. Mm -hmm. or Approve the, order. the revised order dated January twelfth yes. for municipal. Right. That's uh, your motion, uh, Carolyn. I'll second that motion. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever Alex did is what we want. Okay. So as of today. Um, yeah. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Thank you, guys. I really, again, appreciate your support on this. No problem. Um, just to circle yeah, back, Dave. Kathy, it's, uh, I just wanted to let Kathy know, is, you know, I just have a hard time trying to fix stupid, and it just <laughs> drives me crazy. I get it. I do it all day long. <laughs> yeah. 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 I just don't want stupid infecting me, okay? Because yeah. I'm old, you know. I'm over six. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, so when thank do you. you. Get, when do you get to my age? <laughs> <laughs> thank you for all you do. Thanks, um, Dave. Thank you, well, for your time and input too. Yes, thank you, um, Dave. While you were um, switching and coming back in, we were talking a, a bit and had, and had approved the um, job descriptions for the. The um, yeah. for the the chief operator and the the operator wastewater yep, yeah for wastewater but we didn't get yeah. into yet the draft town um, of Deerfield wastewater agreement with the uh, town of Amherst so they've graciously yeah offered to help with the transition until we have enough staff and so there's an MOU between the mm -hmm. two towns that council has reviewed um, and it, it looks good to me and. I went through it all and I think it looks fine and I don't know if anybody wants to talk about it at all but they just now is this between is this between, between the town of Amherst and the town of Deerfield that's it correct is. yep yes. and it, but it, it does okay. list okay. us okay. as select board and Sewer Sewer commissioners Commission. so there's no question on who authority. is of any authority right yep. Yep. Um, I didn't have any yep. questions I'm I just want to make sure that um we thank okay. amherst. when we do vote this we thank amherst because that yeah. is a huge it's a huge help i know help. I mean, and this is very very much in line with and, and it's really based on the same mou that amherst was so great helping the way the uh, water district in deerfield during the 
transition to a new superintendent as well. Um, so they, they've really stepped up and helped our town and I can't be more grateful to them um, just, just to do this. Um, and so really the idea is because we're down uh, quite a bit of staff, they're, they're gonna be able to, you know, we'll, Kevin will put out a request uh, for, for specific tasks needed. Um, they'll send that out to their guys in Amherst. Those guys will say, yeah, I can do that this time or I can't or this I can do. And then uh, we'll pay them their hourly rate like we would normally pay our guys and they'll come in and give a hand to Gary and the other crews and um, I, I don't have it in this thing, but we also need to talk about uh, DPC has been really great. That's our engineering firm. They've been at the plant working on um, you know, the operation manuals for both plants, you know, what, what do we need to do? What are the steps that need to take every day? And then um, how do we report all this stuff, our, our monthly, daily, and annual reports to DEP? So they're putting all of that together, which is a heavy lift as well, and um, have reduced their fees to do that, but it's still a good chunk of money. I don't, we don't have that in the agenda tonight, but um, I don't know if it can be anticipated, unanticipated or not. I mean, we can deal with this one first, so. I just well, want to I'll, that I'll make a motion note. to approve the MOU with the town of Amherst. Thank you. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Thank you very much. And could we just like, have an acknowledgement of the appreciation to this when it goes to Amherst, Casey? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank we you. really, we really need thank to you. make sure that they do. They've helped us out quite a bit. Yep. Great. And and this is a kind of a two-way street too. So if Amherst needs something at all, this is how the contract, the MOU is written that if they have a, a need, you know, this is ongoing. So if they have a need that we can help with, we, we want to do the same for them. But um, it'll be coming yes. this way mostly. But, but in the meantime, if they need something, we're, we're there too, whatever we can do. So very grateful. Mm -hmm. um, I know Casey, we don't have anything really to show at the moment for that. Cause I know it was pretty late that I, uh, we got the DPC estimate. Um, you know, if Kevin was here, we'd talk about that a little bit. I don't know if we want to just. Do you uh, want to give an update while I see if I can find it in my email and I can screen share it? Oh, sure. Yeah. So, um, let me, um, I, I can do that too. I know I, oh, bear with me, I have it. So really the idea is again, just that they are, um, they jumped in right away uh, when our operator left, they came up that next morning and uh, jumped in and went through the computers, um, uh, worked with Gary. They've been going to each plant, trying to figure out, okay, what are the steps that need to be done every day as routine? And then what needs to be done um, uh, there's several items. There's building the, um, they have a term for this, but if you scroll down a bit, I can tell you it's the operating manuals for South Deerfield plant and um, Old Deerfield plant. So uh, you can see there's O&M manual for the South Deerfield wastewater treatment plant. This would be, you know, establishing the standard procedures and kind of putting all that into a manual. So if this ever happens again, or when people come on board, when we hire new people, they'll be able to have everything in one spot as a book to go through. Um, and then, uh, as you can see on your screen here, this is these are all the tasks, and they're pretty much the same at each plant. But it's it's kind of establishing this work, um, and then also um, doing the report, get, getting all the reports done out to DEP, and working with the. Um, um, the guys at DEP to kind of make sure that the forms that have been going in are in the right format and um, and we just continue that so we don't have any any you know uh, loss of data on the way so we've been trying to recover the files and make sure everything's good we've had redundancy of of um, you know digital and they always do a paper form so we have all of that stuff it's just kind of now we need to do all the annuals because this was. January 1st, so all the annual reporting needs to get done along with, um, you know, continuing on every day. So uh, they reduced their fees 25% um, and um, just on a good faith basis, they just jumped in and started working. So 
this is kind of where we're at at the meantime. We do have the funds. I checked with um, Brenda and Casey did as well, and and we have the money in um, Kevin's engineering budget for the plant, so we're covered. Um, and it's just kind of what we got to do, along with getting these. Um, so are you saying that we we never had standard operating procedure? For those plants? We, we did have some, like, because I found a couple things, but they were ancient. I mean, it was just old stuff. So okay. for, for any, like, I went in and there, there's like, if you know, if OSHA walks in the building, there's a bin with a book, like, what do you do if there's a chemical yeah. um, leak and that kind of thing? But but just the everyday, like, I go to Old Deerfield, you know, just talking with Gary, I, he goes to Old Deerfield. These are, the, these are the valves he turns. This is the thing he pumps. This is where he you know, takes out the waste. Um, you know, these are the kind of steps that happen every day. And then, oh, there's a seal blown and I've got to rip down a whole valve system and try and, you know, find another one and put it in. Those things we don't really have, you know, so much in, in a, because they just happen all the time. The plants are so old, they're breaking constantly. Um, but But those everyday things of the checking this and then doing that really, isn't up to date and has changed quite a bit over the years. So a, a, as requirements change from DEP as well. Yeah. Okay. So this will, this will all be new. And, and so when, when we do hire somebody, they have everything laid out in front of them to, to know what to do. Okay. Casey. So we have to vote to approve this expense. Unless I don't know if we have to do it next meeting because it, you know, this was really unanticipated, but Casey's got her hand up. Yep. The reason I, Mr. Chair, through you, um, Trevor, I think based on the situation we're in now, um, I think we leave ourselves open if we don't approve a con if the select board doesn't consider approving this contract because, again, they've actually DPC's actually started helping us. Mm -hmm. I think it, it's a which is why Trevor's bringing it up, I think, David, is I saw this okay. Monday evening. I didn't even see it in, in time to post it. Right. Or I would have tried to put it on the agenda for discussion in this item because it pertains directly yep. to some of the work we just discussed. Yeah. Well, so I would call okay. it item unanticipated. I would, I would um, make a motion we approve this contract. Just, I mean, we're going to do it anyway, so yeah do it now puts us in a better position going yeah. forward yeah be you nice second it, trevor i'll second that thank you sorry <laughs> any further discussion it'll just be nice when there's not Hearing a sword none, all those in favor hi trevor I daniel I, yeah i know it'll be nice not to have crises uh, constant i know yeah hi dave wolfram Thank you, Dave. Carolyn responds. I don't know. Yes, she did. Yeah, no, I did. I voted right off. Yep. Okay. 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 So that does it for the sewer tonight, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I do believe. We get a phone call. <laughs> we can still flush <laughs> toilet in town. Don't yeah. jinx us, Trevor. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, hey, on that topic, okay, quick question, uh, Mr. Chair, to Trevor. Yeah. Um, where is, is all the What's that? Your name? Where is all the sewage going? That is a good question to to bring oh. up because I've no like it looks bare with this project going on. <laughs> it's all it's all being processed still. So we're they have. Um, yeah, they're doing this in tandem. So they're still maintaining and treating the sewage and it, and we still have great numbers going out to the river for the clean water while we're putting in the headworks building and a new clarifier and the RAS building and yeah, so there's it's it's, it's a, a tricky dance, but it's all it's all happening. Yeah. Because we I drive because, by and I'm looking at the progress and it looks <laughs> phenomenal. It's just yeah. where is it going? Right. Well, the, luckily, uh, thankfully, the town did that emergency repair of that secondary clarifier, so we could yep. we could still treat while we're doing this and putting oh, another clarifier. Yep. Thank you for answering my question. Sure. No problem. So, yeah, we've got okay. So I think the next thing on our Agenda is really 
Dwight? Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. I, I will keep this brief since we have been trying to keep you updated, but I, I realized that we had made a commitment to deliver two options to the select board by the end of December 2021, and we did not keep that commitment. So I thought it would make sense for me to come to you all, uh, update you briefly on uh, what we've done and also what we are about to do and make sure that we are aligned with the way you want us to go. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> um, as you know, we, we determined that we wanted to build on town property and we ended up discovering 300 acres that we brought to your attention in the spring. Um, while we were doing all this, we were talking to lots of town committees and then the idea for the Connecting Community Initiative was born and we helped to um, bring that to fruition as well. And, but we've always been trying to also do the work of senior housing along the way. So one of the, <coughs> we've identified the following criteria for senior housing in Deerfield, that it should be on town owned land if possible. And it does seem like that should be possible because we own a lot of land. Um, senior housing should be developed as a friendly 40B, which is subsidized housing for people age 55 and older, um, as you know, but I figure I should make it clear for the record. Um, the senior housing homes must be within the center of the community, walkable to key services, sociable, accessible, energy efficient, and have the outdoors as much a part of the design as the indoors. And um, moving forward, we've <coughs> started uh, contacting the, the FERCOG to develop, a, oh, and with a lot of help from Sunderland, by the way, uh, giving us ideas on how to move forward. They've been amazing. Um, to develop a feasibility study that includes a needs survey as well as an evaluation of the Brayburn property and the campus of municipal buildings, businesses, and town commons. So the committee is developing its application to the CPC for funding for the feasibility study. And um, we'll need to bring that to town meeting, I believe. And we have completed a first draft of the survey. This is based on the survey we did 20 years ago that was um, done for the town by the, uh, the company uh, Gerontological Services Inc., which is a national and international uh, firm specializing in the field of aging. And we updated the questions and we're going to review that with, um, I believe, Linda Dunlevy. And so over the next few months, we expect to send out the survey. It's a needs survey to Deerfield residents. We wanna engage with the FERCOG for the feasibility study. And most importantly, continue to work with the um, Connecting Community Initiative. So we inform its work and our work conforms with the larger vision of, that the other committees are bringing forward. So that's where that's what we've managed to do in a year, and that's where we're at. Um, I think, did we get the survey yet uh, that we have to fill out for, um, uh, you know, the FERCOG for our technical assistance yet? Yeah, it's in our, it's in our packet. Okay. We just got it. Oh, I guess I must have missed it. Yeah. All right. It's not in the packet. Oh, it's not? No, because it's not final. <laughs> Remember, mean, Trevor, yeah? I sent you a comment. Um, Sorry, Carolyn. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, no. I I just wanted to make sure that we. Oh, is it in mail? Up. No, it's in. It's actually in your email, Trevor. So this is the survey that we're working with UMass Boston on, and we had gone through um, informational meetings to develop the inf to develop oh, the survey no, no, itself. I'm talking no. about, that's no, this the, is this is the that's, that's separate, Yeah, no, no. That's a separate assessment uh, survey. The one Lily is talking about is the actual housing, housing survey that we have to go to. That's what we take to the bank to get financing, or you know, to a, like RDI to get USDA um, grant money to get the financing for. That's a separate. You have a um, ours is the is the housing needs survey. This was 
the senior survey, the building needs for the senior center. So it's two separate, so ours and the one that you're talking about, Casey, has already been funded by the town and is, is on its way and being done um, through UMass. The one we're doing is gonna be done through technical assistance and done through the FERCOG and um, what's, what's the lady's name? It's a new Linda position. Dunleavy, is that it? No, oh, no, 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 Linda, Amanda. but it's oh. Alyssa Rose, LaRose went to um, the right. housing authority and she's, she's working, working with at us. RDI now, yes. Yeah, but so it's a new person at um, Fur that will be handling it. Amanda Dossler? Well, the, I, I thought you talked about this is the 2022 local technical assistance request yes. form from That's, from FERCOG, which right. is in our packet tonight, just to review and see, you know, what we all decide we want to use. But um, it you sounds like we check, already have something yeah. here. Right, we have to check in. off that is our number one priority. Is it? Well, uh, that's the question. Is it because? <laughs> Because uh, there's other former, senior things the, that the senior were priorities housing, last year. The senior housing committee is hoping that would be our priority. Yes, yes. We would dearly like to advocate that it be a, a priority. Yes. And we, we had talked about it from, you know, a couple months now. So but I will say, and I don't want to be like undercutting our, our argument here, but um, we asked Tim Hilchey, and he said that CPA funds can pay for feasibility studies. So if, and we have the CPA funds, but mind you, I'd rather use it to build a, a home if, if we um, already have this relationship that's already paid for with the FERCOG. I'm not sure I understand it entirely, but anyway, um, plus they do have the expertise. So we definitely want to use them. Can um, so just I was looking at the DTLA um, survey and, you know, checking off the boxes that we might want and the, under housing planning and implementation technical assistance, I think that might be the header. And there was create a housing production plan, a five year plan that identifies housing needs of a community and outlines the uh, strategies a town can take towards meeting those yeah. needs, uh, conduct a housing needs assessment and or housing needs study or survey. And then implement That's local it. housing initiatives such as drafting zoning changes, uh, setting up community preservation. Act. Okay, so it's the it's that second one, conducting a housing needs assessment and survey. Yeah. Okay, right. That's the one you take to the bank to make sure you get money. Got it. Otherwise, you you get no financing from anybody. And And this is not for us. I mean, this is this is what RDI would use to go to get USDA funds for us. Yeah. And then so that if, if if everybody agrees, that would be our number one. But I do think we should still go through and yeah, no, check I'm off the that. one through five or whatever we need. Because yeah. there's they always they always have a lot of good things we could pick from. Um okay. Well that's that's good to know. All right. Anna Lee has her hand up. Thank you, Jen. Um, yes, just to mention that what you were taking off there, Trevor, might be um, confused with the housing production plan rather than specifically for the senior housing. So we just want to make sure that FERCOG knows what you're talking about here. Um, planning board certainly is interested in a housing, uh, you know, needs assessment, but that could also be seen as being quite a bit broader. So right. just, there's some with you know, the terminology there that we just want to make sure we've got going yeah yeah absolutely yep i think lynn it's pretty clear to linda what we want right uh, you know she knows we want to be able to go to the banks and say look here here's here's a solid need we're a good investment kind of thing so i guess what and, what we need as a committee is like um you to verify with you all that you're good that we're going to move forward with exploring the FERCOG um, using them as our way to move forward with actually getting this housing moving along because Sunderland highly recommended <laughs> they got a great feasibility study out of them yeah. so um, I just want to make sure that that makes sense to you all um, and that we could have 
we'd like to put on our dibs for that the technical um, assist money if possible. Mm -hmm. um, and then I guess we're we're still going to move ahead with the um, the um, CPC application at the same time. We'll figure out how where monies might have to go and. We right. can drop one or the other if we if they're covered, but we just yep. want to make sure it happens. I think um, by reviewing the survey, the original survey, which was really, really professionally done and a huge donation to the town, um, that and, and updating the questions and getting those questions, the, the cost of the survey is going to be Much lower. reduced quite a bit. Should and be. So, so, yeah, so it should be a very good start and um should be get get gotten done fairly we'd like to do it fast yeah. love to do it by the end of february sort of slash march while people are well, when still they, their homes but they um so when we need to have this in by what friday is that the idea no that can't be that quick oh january 28th um we what need happens to is the, the um the FERCOG people sit down with the state people Right. And, and then they um, understand what is available and what they're going to fund or what ca they can fund. Yeah. It, you know, it, this is just ideas that go to the state and the right. state is the one that parcels out the technical assistance. So then they figure out how, you know, these are our needs from our communities. And then how are you going to fund or meet our needs? And housing is a is the number one one of the number one priorities in the state so right. we should get funded for this fairly i mean i would say there's a really good chance of this yeah but, so i mean because they're they're pretty much want to fund all housing kind of things so it should work but who knows and yeah and they're asking for your rank of top three so we can do that we can do that and then the other two items that you know we think would be important if I mean, who knows? Maybe they have a ton of money with all that slopping around at the state. They could do more than one thing for us. So, great. So, is there anything else that um, you would like to direct us to pay attention to, or any suggestions that you people that we should talk with? I, I don't have anything at the moment. I think you're doing a great job, and I know. It's a lot of work, and you've been holding a lot of meetings, and I'm very grateful for that. We and, do uh, meet a lot. Jen, a lot to do, and uh, on everyone's part. So I appreciate. I have to say, I, I want to thank Lily for using her account and yeah, doing her part of sending me the information, and that takes yeah. a huge load off. So thank oh, you. Good. Thank you, Lily. <laughs> Well, yep. thank you for all you do. Very, very right. I, and I've been delinquent in the last two meetings and I feel really bad. Oh, <laughs> but you you won't just stay for long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had excuses, good excuses. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. See, did you want to say something? You had your hand up. No. Okay. Okay. All right. So we'll we'll do our part of reviewing and right. turning that into Casey and uh that what you'd like, Casey, probably, right? Us to well, do our choices and have a discussion next on the 26th. Mr. Chair, through you, they recommend that the requests go out to interested parties like the planning board and other boards. So I sent the request out. Mm -hmm. I told people to get back to me by the 20th, but ultimately you have to do a ranked response top three um we've had these conversations about senior housing and mm -hmm. and getting back to the drawing board on that for the last year and a half yeah. so i'm trying to be mindful of making sure people are aware but also that this the ranking is important yeah because it really does narrow down the field of what we can expect the cog to advocate for and plan for through the DLTA funds. Okay. Um, I, uh, we, we can get to that. Uh, I mean, we can do that now or we can do that later, but um, the next item on the agenda is the select board reports. And I was hoping Dave 
um, we could make an announcement um, about the informational night, the ad hoc town committee um, is putting forward an informational night tomorrow night at yes. 30 and we're hoping people will participate. Um, and, and I mean, the town common committee has been putting a lot of work into four years. So, <laughs> so people need to come. To and I, hope, I hope that they will tune in at six 30 tomorrow night. Yes, um, and then the next thing is, um, there was that announcement today that, uh, the MMA is canceled and, um, I mean, in some ways, I'm. I have to tell you, I'm relieved because I I was actually going to eat in my room and stuff. I didn't want to go to Boston restaurants. <laughs> I mean, it was going to be like a weird. I mean, because the whole purpose is networking, and so you know, hiding out in your room at mealtime is probably gross. But anyway, um, but I'm so disappointed at our opportunity for networking and. Yep pressuring and trying to get waivers and all that kind of stuff. So we've got to figure out some strategies. And um, Dave, if you um, don't mind, um, I, got, I invited Denise and I was hoping that we could do some strategies on this. Well, I think, are we all going to go? I mean, everyone's still going to go to the, are they doing it online? Yes. Yes, yeah, it's online, so you still um, can go and register for whichever online um, workshop and seminars you want. Did they you know, did they put the password out yet? Because I tried to download the app and I couldn't. No, it's online. You should have gotten an email from them this afternoon. Oh, okay, I'll check. Yeah, so okay. check your email. And also, you know, built into our budget process is you know we all go to those. Um, workshops that give us credit Correct. On insurance and i only i went to two of them i couldn't even get into the third one but i did go to two but i only got credit for one last and i year? don't know yeah last year and i don't know if it was because we maxed out because we always max out right and it's like man you know they sign in and they manually give it to us right so i don't know if it's because you signed up before i did and right. they counted you instead of me or whatever but yeah I, I want to make sure somebody is monitoring how many that we, those workshops are credits on our insurance because right. we got to do it. Max out. We max yeah. out on it and that is already built into our budget. Right. So it helps us for sure. It helps us, you know, get, you know, five or 10% off or 8% off or something. I mean, that, yeah. but that's substantial. That's a chunk of money. Yep. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I need help. I'm sorry, Jennifer. You're we'll figure it out. <laughs> I was just going to ask, uh, how do I monitor that? Like, yeah, no, I don't know, but I, so I, I just want to make sure that we get enough credits. We'll just look at the list and and next to the, there's certain workshops that could help you with that. Me, my, yeah. yeah. It says Maya right next yeah. to it. So we just kind of go down those and then we decide, okay, Karen will go to that one. Dave will go to this one. I'll go to one and we can all um, can make sure. Can you send, send me your choices? Yes. And yep. that way I can then see if you guys no, are. Up. I'm, I'm going to have to come in. We're going to have to, we can meet in the main meeting room. We'll have to make some kind of appointment because I can't, I can't do this over the computer. Okay. Oh, um, Casey has her hand up. So I was looking at the information um, about the change in venue. Yeah. I think these workshops are not going to happen on a two day period of time. I think they're going to happen over a period of beginning the end of January through February. Ah, because okay. I believe and, and Denise and Jennifer can tell me if I'm wrong. I read it about five times. But I think what they're doing is they're going to do the workshops. But do them spread it out the business meetings will happen on the 20th and the 21st i think i see but we'll check we'll yeah. clarify that tomorrow i was hoping we'd have more clarity tomorrow from mma because their news item on this change was hard to parse okay well yeah. it was done you know really fast heavy well, heart i have to say is you know the comparison of in person versus versus virtual is drastically drastically different i mean you're in people's faces to tell them we need you to give us a waiver we need you know we need money whatever and 
it's not the same on the on zoom i'm sorry and so I, we need to have i need to have some help and we need to have some kind of strategy on this yeah, well, I, denise I, and i were talking about it today uh, a little bit and you know going through the list of vendors and getting addresses so we can still send our postcards and if people have direct contacts we should talk about that right Denise? Well, yeah exactly. yeah do you want do you want me to i've got a plan okay <laughs> so yeah i mean when i spoke with jen i you know and said oh my god we worked so hard on this postcard it's great and um jen said well we can send them obviously we can't send it out so i called our designer and i also looked I can get envelopes, nice white envelopes, um, to send the postcard in. I think we should have a cover letter that goes along with the postcard, introducing it, saying, hey, so sorry, you know, it's unfortunate we weren't able to meet in person. You know, obviously, we'd have to have someone help uh, draft that letter. And then um, also, I would have her, wait a minute, let's see. Oh, she can also do a PDF postcard that can be sent to the individuals as well. So I'd like to do send an email and send a postcard so they get the double whammy. And then to set up a time for a Zoom meeting or an in-person meeting with whomever. I mean, I have no clue who the people, you know, how many people we would send it to, you know, that's up to you guys. Um, and then let's see, definitely want it to be white so it's visible. I am happy to hand address them because this, this is what I did for the past 20 years, you know, marketing and business. So people are more apt to open it up if it's a hand addressed letter. Then also we can get, um, the designer can make shrink down labels to put on it, to put on the back that, back that has, um, you know, CCI town of Deerfield. So they, they will open the postcard and let's see what else. Okay, that's pretty much it. And then I did, yeah, I looked on the MMA conference website for a list of names, but uh, there's nothing on there now. But typically, there's usually a book that's handed out at the conference. Yeah, with it all gives the, us all the agency names and yeah. stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm happy to work on that. And it would basically be just getting a cover letter together to put in with that and to send it out and to email. Didn't I put the list of vendors in your packet that I gave you? Oh gosh, yes, but I don't know if I have the in, all the information. No, and that's what I thought we could go through because remember uh -huh. and then see if anybody knows of those specific names of the people that we would like to talk to. So right. I mean, okay. I don't know that that would be you know Trevor and and Dave and Carolyn. Right. I have no idea what vendors are the ones that you want to contact. I mean, I don't want to just send out a mass mailing. You know, so far we've got 50 postcards. We could have more printed if if needed. Well, we have to talk to the Department of, you know, DESE, Department of Education, for our, you know, zip code and, um, you know, the 01342 and 01373 zip code issues on the foundation. That's so then maybe separate, so, yeah. that's separate from the CCI. Right. But we, right. Casey, that's got to be our number one thing because that actually is money that we're going to get cut. And I, I still think it's around 300,000 if we don't get a permanent waiver. We've got a, a temporary waiver, yeah. but um, and Casey will have to track down or Jen is going to have to track down that woman's name because I can't find her card. I'm sure I'm going to clean out my desk, but I have her card, original card, and I, I know she's retiring pretty soon. So she was wonderful. She got us a temporary waiver that gives us an exemption, but we need we need to make sure it's permanent. And so that's separate. Then, the, then it's the community development agency that's part of, you know, the bigger agency. And I think it's EEOA is the is the umbrella. And this is one of the ones in it, Casey, isn't it? That we want to talk to. And they never replaced that woman yet, have they? That that came and met with you on the first day. That your first year and I haven't yeah I haven't searched I, I haven't been able to find her no she left she left but there was an oh we got a bounce back email months and it was over a year ago when they finally found that email request for information we got a bounce back and they gave another name and I never found I can't find the woman in my email now 
it was another person that replaced her okay. that's who we need that was the one that was willing to do the pilot program for us and she actually brought her team out to meet with casey on her first day so that is the correct agency we need that should be the number one agency that we're leading for trevor do you remember anything about that agency not a ton i could look through and you know i probably have something in a book from that time but it's you know would you have saved a card i know i saved a card somewhere um i'm gonna have to my office through. being emptied out. <laughs> i don't know where it would be at this moment uh but i i can look back because i would have saved it in our you know in my in my book so my binder so i'll look back and see if i can find something okay. i'll come in and look i know that was just when covid hit so it was that I'll, I'll know the date so I can just look and. Well, it would be March 2020. March, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was March so I'll go 2020. Back to that. I don't know, Casey, when was your first day? What was that? That was like. Yeah, that was, February, that was the day. Right? February 11th, 2020. Say, say with Jennifer. She was here the next March, week. Then, March 23rd. And then, yeah, the day, like two days before we closed. <laughs> we closed. And, and then we were supposed to have this big known. meeting. The big meeting in April never happened. Remember? Right. We were supposed to have this big follow up. Yeah, meeting down in Hadley. Yeah. Down in Hadley in April. So that never yeah. happened. And so we've had no conversation. That person, she left after that. Would there be a calendar event? Would we have? No. No. Okay. No. We didn't schedule it. Oh, what's the name of the agency again, Carolyn? It's not the economic, wait. Yes. Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what okay. it was. That one, but it's I was googling that today and trying to look up some information. It's a sub agency or a right. sub. Well, there, there are multiple ones. There's one that says Community One Stop for Growth. There's also Reopening Massachusetts. Um, and I looked on Community One Stop for Growth, and they've got Small Town Initiative. There's a lot of information there. Now, usually our the our de legislative delegation shows up and we can meet with them in person. But we, it's the, uh, Casey, what's the name of that bill? It's H um, 3621 or something like, what's the Natalie and Joe's bill for the- 3821. It's on as an item unanticipated. Oh, okay. God. I, I and I, there is a, I did put a download copy of the bill and that's for, so 3821, is something that originated in Auditor Bump's report, basically outlining how municipal and public safety building authority support doesn't exist. And many of the municipal buildings that we work in are deteriorating because towns just can't afford to make repairs in the same and don't have the opportunity to use building funds the way that schools and libraries do. So initially Auditor Bump came out with the report and actually included some of the photographs from the senior center. <laughs> I know. Our yeah. Building is, our building is, is high. This was, I think it was published in September or October when, yes. when they finalized it. And then Natalie and Joe followed up with separate bills related to creating this municipal and public safety building authority. So what they mentioned, the testimony was pushed back, the testimony deadline was pushed back to the 26th, or the, yeah, the 26th. And Carolyn and I talked about it. And basically the question relates back to who do you talk to? Well, you've got, you, a lot of these state agencies once they take a bill and turn it into a law and then they figure out what state agency to send it to and it's a bug hunt to figure out who to talk to well what we want to make sure is that we testify number one so because we're testifying in our building our senior center the closed senior center is featured in the report then what we want to do is make sure that we're first in line for the million dollars so um you know because it's maxed you you get up to a million dollars so you know that's going to be the cornerstone of our first piece that goes in because we're going to get that money joe and and natalie are definitely aware of it we're going to testify we're featured so that's going to be number one denise um right. on our target because that's given money already the money is coming from the federal government on you know infrastructure money so 
and that's how it's going to fund it. I'm sure I'm almost a hundred percent sure. So that's what we're going to do. Hey, Carol, I was just looking, um, I th there are different subsets of the um, EOHE, and there's one called Massachusetts Downtown Initiative, MDI. You're familiar with that then. Okay, that's that may be where she's from because when you look at it, it says encouraging community involvement and ownership, preserving and enhancing downtown character, um, ensuring economic vitality, promoting downtown assets, getting in and around downtown, living downtown and keeping downtown safe. I mean, it sounds exactly what we're looking for. So, you know, maybe just being able to contact someone from there. I mean, it seems like it's pretty limited, I think, for um, maybe a study. It's $25,000 and they'll help you. But I think the most they give is like $300,000, which is it's not It's all right. Not you much. can in here, 300 yeah. here. I mean, this is what we're doing, a cobbling right. together total. But they so, also have, um, through this, there's um, a one, let's see, what is it? A one-stop community one stop for growth so you fill out one application and then it is just which you're probably familiar with okay yeah yeah he's not in gen i mean i don't know that i was just looking that up no but this is great and i know that person we didn't have we don't have a contact there now because the yeah. person moved on or quit or whatever i don't know what happened they well, she just disappeared so okay I mean, casey was in constant contact with her for like two or three weeks and then the person disappeared so so know. just question is it possible i know that you know we don't want to um because of open meeting law is it possible to actually get together to go over some of this outside of zoom to figure out you know more of a strategic if you, game if you do this with us individually or casey sir if we you and casey do something and then circulate it to the three of us yeah Okay. 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 Well, because I think it's then helpful. We, then if I mean, we have any comments, we have to go back to Casey. Yeah, but what you were just saying is, you know, Joe, you know, money through this and money through that. I mean, I don't know all that information, but uh, I'm sure Casey knows all that. So, you know, once we have that, I think that would be helpful information. Well, we have to have a game plan, and I right. I think that sounds like a good start for that game plan. Yeah, and I mean, as far as sending things out, you know, getting addresses, email addresses, and then actual physical addresses, and if we're you know, concerned about who is the person to go to at the physical address, I can make phone calls and ask who's the right person to send it to. We can send it out, but having the PDF, I think it's really helpful because remember a lot of the state um, right. agencies have not even gone back into their offices yet. Well, true, but it's, it's also helpful to know who to send it to because I'm telling you all this stuff gets lost in the shuffle. I know. I know. So yeah. what I'm saying is I'm willing to make phone calls to find out who's the right person to send to. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll talk to Casey, see when she, she has time to meet Casey. So, um, the, other, the other thing to get um, advice input in is uh, through Joe Cumberford and, and Natalie Blaze office and, and ask them who to talk to for what we're trying to do. I mean, Good. and you cross section, you know, crosshair, who, who's the right person? Because, you know, looking at the stuff online or talking to people that might not actually be the best person or Joe and Natalie have uh, a line to, yep. you know, the a person that's better, you know, that we might not even have thought of or is not on our radar. Okay, good idea. Um, and so those are for state funds, but I don't, you know, we got to keep working on the state level because I haven't heard any more. I, I had a meeting today, um, our Northeast um, National Association of Conservation Districts met, and um, we were talking about what monies are available. So we do have to prioritize our um, culverts because there's a ton of money coming down through 319 money the long island sound initiative that we got going a few years ago which includes the deerfield river watershed the pl66 uh watershed program is it got another 50 million and um i think 120 million is coming is coming out over the i mean not in through the farm bill additional right direct to nrcs for technical assistance so that means we could get some engineering um and so we could focus still focus on the downtown stuff and we hopefully can get some of our 
collapsing culverts and not use town money for that. And that would be huge. So um, anyway, we got to keep an eye on that. And um, I, I talked to everybody today. And so we're going to, anytime anyone hears anything, we're going to circulate it. So hopefully we'll be on top of that money and not having to do the culverts in town that are collapsing are huge. So that will relieve some pressure on us, uh, you know, on our municipal money. And, and, and usually the governor um, announces at our meeting how much money is coming out under chapter 90. And my understanding is it's going to be two or three times what we normally get. We normally get like 300,000. So we have additional money for maybe, you know, sidewalks and whatever that kind of stuff we could dedicate to. So that would be in addition to the money we normally get for our pavement management plan. So that's a good thing. Um, so we just, we gotta, we gotta look at all these opportunities and figure out how, how this is gonna keep channeling us to our, you know, campus. So this, I mean, that was pretty exciting news really. And I don't, I don't, and I don't know, Casey, if this is a good time in my mosquito meeting yesterday, offhand comment led to um, this, hopefully, I think a wonderful person um, that uh, who is um, access granting, access grant writing LLC, Alice Rich. Um, I was hoping that Trevor and Dave would be supportive of Casey at least reaching out to Alice. Um, she writes grants and manages grants. And so it seems like it would be ooh, an opportunity to have someone work with Casey and Denise so that you know we're on top of this because this, this is gonna be a lot to juggle. So, um, and I believe if you look at the ARPA guidelines that Casey sent out today, the ARPA guidelines say that you could, you know, additional staff to help facilitate economic, you know, kind of activity. And we're certainly doing economic activity. I think what we can do is going to be in support of, of all this downtown vitality. So I think it, and housing and all that. So, and, and impacts from the, um, you know, impacts from the pandemic. So I think we could pay um, Alice out of our ARPA funds and she could work with you and, uh, you know, Denise and Casey, if, if you guys feel comfortable with her. So, I mean, that's kind of exciting. Yeah, I would, I mean, I would certainly endorse Casey meeting with her and seeing what can, what can come of that for help to, to do that. I mean, just whatever you guys, I mean, we obviously need some help and we talked about um, we talked about a grant writer and um, somebody to help facilitate the ARPA projects and whatever else we could get for help from that, because it just I, our staff is just overwhelmed to take on another project like that at the moment. And um, even though we still need to do this stuff, so um, I, I think it's worth you know, looking at that and seeing if it's a relationship we could move forward with, but um, I mean, it's it has totally to be up something Casey. that Casey is yeah. right. It, it, I leave it in Casey's wheelhouse to see if she has the time for that, and only if it benefits her, right? And 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 all of us. Well, I'm I'm just thinking of the senior housing stuff. I'm thinking of all our, you know, the town hall business and the senior center, community center. We're trying to do the library. We we we've got a lot to juggle. Right. And, uh, and we need somebody to organize like a million here, 300,000 here, 400,000 here, whatever. I mean, we got to, we got to, we got to say, okay, with the sewer treatment plant in Old Deerfield, we're looking at 55 million, 60 mm -hmm. million in that line. Okay. So we got to have somebody organizing the sources of the 50 to $60 million. And so that we can maximize our approach to this. And um, I, I feel like if you had additional person working with Casey and, and Denise and Lily and, you know, all the people that are trying to work and make this happen, the common, town common committee, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, Chris Curtis, because yeah. we got to bring in 
I mean, part of this is the MVP stuff. Like we've got to peel off the cost of the green cost to the Leary lot. What, what does it cost to, to do stuff standard and ugly? What's the difference between standard and ugly and green and beautiful? And we peel that off and put that under the MVP program. So, okay, so right off, that's, you know, maybe only be 200,000, but that's another 200,000. And then it gives us the, our ARPA money, we're not using up all our ARPA money on the Leary lot. Um, same as the sewer treatment plant. We, we have to put up, you know, height, heightened tanks and other resiliency kind of things might only be 400,000, but it's 400,000 right off the top, you know? So we, we've got to do, I mean, we got to have somebody that can do a spreadsheet and organize where we're getting all this funding from. Cause it's, I mean, just talking about it, it's even confusing. It, it is. And we have to kind of get our base operations of running the town set before we're, you know I, we have all these projects we need to do but it, 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 it all of a sudden you're like you can't do anything because everything else is falling apart so we have to we just got to get our base down and yeah i agree if if if, if this position would work and it and it would relieve casey from and jen from work versus adding to their work because like getting another person also adds to their work so it's like how do we how do we find that that baseline of that it that it helps instead of adds to but yeah i'm i'm i leave it to, to you if to, and you know to casey and jan and everybody can can this work and and is this something a conversation to have that would benefit everybody so that we can put all this together without adding more um, and, I'm, and i'm not trying to confuse things but Actually, there's going to be a lot of money for public health. So mm -hmm. Alex should be on top of what's coming out of public health. And mm -hmm. then we add that into the pile of, you know, this is the grant stuff that we're going to be interested in. You know, I mean, I, I want to increase pu this public health nursing to the senior center and all that kind of stuff. And we, we, you know, we want to make sure that we have mental health services and all kinds of stuff that we'd like to do. And it should right. be available through the, um, you know, DPH. So, I mean, that's just one more thing that we put into the spreadsheet that somebody has to pay attention to. So, I mean, I think it could be very helpful. And she's a nice person. It so is long as, of, yeah, I mean, as long as it I mean, this is lessens the work. Yeah, right. It's got to lessen the work. That's all I can say. Right. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I, I, it's just that when you, you hear of somebody that's effective and good and kind and nice and and very competent then you know you want to latch on to them pretty quick and i think casey could oh, yeah. use somebody she's looking at me with evil eyes yeah. no <laughs> no no somebody out <laughs> no that was not evil eyes i have a headache <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Been staring at my computer for way too long. So I know you are. You guys I know. No, really and I, I told Carolyn earlier when she called me that I, I would wondering. love to talk to this person because yeah. I do see an opportunity, but we need to see if we can structure how we approach the opportunity. Yeah. And, Absolutely. And Absolutely. I do think that more than one hand has to be involved in this, but yeah. It, yeah. we have to be very careful that we don't create a situation where it, it is more onerous for us right. because right. Oh, we do oh, have yeah. enough to do in here. No, yeah, this yeah. is why this is why I was excited and I got so excited because it sounds like someone totally competent, someone that knows what's going help. on. Relieve some oh. pressure. Yeah. And we'll relieve pressure. I I was excited about that, Casey, because yeah, I've been we're, really we're, trying we're, to I was really worried about how we're gonna juggle all this. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot to juggle. There's four hundred <laughs> some odd pages to read just so we can yeah. figure out what you know, the rules to juggle are downloaded that the other day I got mm. it. yeah it's it's I, hard i read the executive summary and, That's yeah that, <laughs> yeah, i know i checked the box was it that 400 yes. pages the executive yeah. summary was 400 pages oh i know it's gross it's disgusting i know <clears throat> but there's just a lot of there's a lot of opportunity here yeah I, I, we have a lot of need i mean whether it's your seniors whether it's you know the kids whatever there's just there's just a lot of stuff, but there's huge opportunities and I just don't want to miss any opportunities. Yep. Okay. But I am also mindful that Casey is, you know. Is he? Yeah. Please very don't bad. quit. Please don't quit. <laughs> <laughs>
David, I think I heard David. Oh, David, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be talking so much, but I did get excited. <laughs> oh. Into our system as soon as we can. Oh, I think we're, he, we can, I can, we can barely hear you, David. We got to work. We got to work on David's technical. <laughs> Whatever he's doing at home, he's got to go. If FCAT can make a visit out to ZBA yeah. members, how come they can't make a visit out to yeah. David's house, select board members' house? Sometimes this stuff is intermittent. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, but you're right downtown. We can spend money on broadband downtown. We should definitely be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> So we can have more productive meetings. Come on. I'm up here on the hill at the end of the line. John fixed me up. Yeah, I don't know. You know, mine is good sometimes and other times it's it's absolutely terrible, but I know. So. I don't know what happened. But, so yeah, we gotta get our game plan together because we definitely need a, a grant writer and a planner in our system. Yep. And we gotta get it done. Yep. Uh, where's this woman live, Carolyn? Um, she lives in Florence. Okay. That's close and to um, she's wicked nice. Uh, I know her through. Well, Greg Lewis was our planner at the FERCOG. Yep. And he's also on the Mosquito District Commissioner with me. And when he quit the FERCOG, he stayed on as the Mosquito District commu uh, Commissioner. And um, he he was babysitting his kid yesterday so he's a little bit late to the meeting and the reason and he mentioned that his wife was doing a presentation and I was like oh my gosh this is wonderful so I did some talking with her and met her and she seems wicked nice so I I am competent and she okay. you know does stuff she's done stuff like with the town of Pittsfield and the YMCA and you know she's had some municipal back uh work um, it's mostly in conjunction of going out and searching for money from, you know, partners kind of thing. But so she's not had a specific let standalone um, customer being a municipal um, entity, but the same kind of stuff. You need somebody to be organized. You need somebody to be able to do presentations. You need somebody to figure out where the deadlines are and keep everything straight. And, and this is, we're asking, we have such a cumulative project list that there is a huge amount of stuff to keep tra track of. And what are we gonna do when, Not, I mean, we gotta get the money, but then when do we put it in? When is, it has to get done? You know, what parts, how do we move the parts together so that you're, you know, being productive? Hey, I, I, I may have sort of zoned out on it, but is she also a grant writer? Yes. No, that's what she does. Oh, she, oh, okay. I'm okay. sorry. I was access grant writing LLC. Yeah. Okay. No, she, she she's a grant writer. Okay. And, and she's she, done it for municipality. I asked her about administrating. I mean, no, because it's just not get writing the grant well, and getting the grant. It's also making sure the grant. Yeah. Is. That's. You part know. of being a grant writer, right. definitely. Okay, no, I was just, okay. So she do, has done for municipalities because they're grant writers and then they're grant writers. Yeah, no, there's, she's she's one kind of those. That's great. She sounded, the projects that she's done, she sounded like the kind of grant writer we want. We want somebody yeah. that's gonna be productive, not mess around and go right for the money. I just oh, looked yeah. up on LinkedIn. Her name is Alice Rich Lewis on LinkedIn. Yeah, you can this see is her. Greg Lewis's wife. Yeah, and um, and look it up. I, I, I I've been excited since yesterday. So you know what can I say? It's different than COVID, and it's positive. So <laughs> really, it was great to talk about something different. Hey, I'm supposed to be on the beach in Saint Martin right now. So I know, I know that's pretty depressing, Denise. <laughs> yeah, yes, it is. Denise, the, the poor, poor Denise couldn't go because of COVID. <laughs> David, can can you you were trying to say something? Well, I just want to make sure whoever we get for a grant writer, I don't want to get in the same cluster that we've been in all along that we have a grant writer that doesn't administer anything. Oh no, no, I uh, that's one of the things I was asking about is the grant reporting, you know, uh, you know, making sure 
deadlines and reports are being done. And because um, we're going to have whatever combination we have, we're going to have so many. There's going to be several, and they're going to all interlock. And I mean, that's why it's important to have a spreadsheet, somebody that's organized with a spreadsheet that can walk around and make sure that everything is happening correctly. So, I mean, I'm optimistic we'll get the money. I'm optimistic that we certainly have the needs and we can sell it. But on the other hand, it's you got to get you got to meet the deadlines. You got to tell your story, and then you got to manage the grants. And uh, you know, we can't expect Casey to be doing that. So it's going to all of us have to work together to to make sure the workload is manageable. But having a key responsive responsible person is is really what is what we got to do. I mean, that's focused just on this. That's it. Yep, that makes sense. Okay. Can't, I'm sorry. I, I, I no, we can't hear David. Yeah, my my barely oh, at all. I can hear better now. When you yell. <laughs> When I yell, yeah, that's I good. The, right there, I, I got the computer right up to my face. So yeah, something's going on. Is your volume is your volume down or something? Your, no, your mic, up. huh? I don't know. Well, I guess maybe we'll just roll through the agenda pretty quick then. Yeah, tr uh, Trevor, he's usually good about making it quick. If you if you want him to do it, Dave. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. I'll, I'll just, I'll just run. Oh, oh you, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. forget, don't forget to try to come to tomorrow night's meeting at six yeah. thirty, for, okay. at the town for the town common the info meeting. I've got nothing else to do, Carolyn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lily will be cracking the whip because we got a senior housing meeting. But I'm gonna put some sunscreen on in my bathing suit. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah. I'll see well, okay. I'm coming I'm, next. I'm coming tomorrow, Lily. I'm gonna I'm gonna crack the whip now. We're gonna get rolling on this meeting because we're two hours in and we are only on number six. <laughs> yeah, but we did a lot of the other stuff. Oh, we did. Together. We did. I'm very proud of us all. So um <laughs> so uh let's see. So we're moving on. Now? What's that? Can you hear me better now? Uh yes. not really, sort of, but yeah. Okay. Go ahead. All right. So the um we don't have minutes tonight, uh, but discussion items is to open the annual town meeting warrant and special town meeting. Do you want to touch on that, Casey, or do we just make a motion to open it? Because we're leaving it open, and then we can start to add, add agenda items, right? It's a pretty quick agenda item here. Yes. So my request is for the board to open the town meeting warrant with the intent to close it by uh, annual town meeting warrant, sorry, with the intent to close it and the end of a month from now. Okay. So or the closest meeting a month from now. I actually haven't looked at the calendar quite yet on this. That's closing it pretty early, Casey. Um, I'm okay with it. I'm okay, but that's pretty Well, early. you can always open it again. Yeah, we can always open okay. it again. Okay. Yep. I will so make the motion to I'm, open I'm, the I'm, annual town meeting then. Or so the, the move to declare the warrant for the annual town meeting open currently scheduled for April 25th, 2020 at 7 p.m. at Frontier Regional Auditorium uh, with the intent to close said warrant on February 23rd, 2020. <laughs> it's 2022. I cannot oh, get 2022 goodness. out of I'm... my fingertips. Oh, boy. <laughs> so we mean 2022. Thank you. 2022. I, I, no, I was the one that wrote it, Trevor. I know. I was the one that read your writing. <laughs> um, I make that motion. Just as you said, with the corrected 2022 date. Thank you. I'll, I got the day right. <laughs> yes, you did. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? Nope. All those I'll, in favor? Carolyn, aye. Trevor? Aye. Oh, great. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Okay. Thank you very much. I and can't, then, I can't oh. stand this having electronic. Yeah, it's tough. Um, so also make a motion to open the special town meeting warrant. Is that right? Or, or are they both going to be the same? No, I, my question for you folks, we had talked about it before having a special, we know we have items we need to discuss. We need to discuss, um, how we might allocate 
funds from the sale of the Oxford property to pay right. the loan off. Yep. We have the senior center to discuss, but with COVID in front of us right, let's right wait now, a bit. let's wait a little bit and see where we, we may want to wait a bit. So that yep. was the reason I put that item on there because okay. I just wanted to, especially after the discussion earlier this yeah. evening. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, next item is to reconsider the EV charging rate for the Leary lot. So fill me in on that. I'm not sure. Okay. So we walked in and I, I'm going to point fingers at Ms. Gannett over there. Um, <laughs> she was helping us get through some of the heavy lift to get our EV charger installed. And we're hoping it will be installed in the next week or so. But one of the things that came out of those conversations was the fact that our EV charging rate was high. The, and until I, until Jennifer explained this and then the person that we were working with at Voltrex also explained it, but do you want to explain it, Jennifer, or do you want me to? Sure, I can. I mean, it's, yeah. a, it's the same thing. So basically he took the, the 75 cents and put it towards how much it is per gallon of gas and pretty much it's seven dollars and fifty cents per per gallon of gas equivalent equivalent to the kilowatts so 75 cents per kilowatt equals seven dollars and fifty cents per gallon mm -hmm. so he said to me that it was very high and that he just thought that that was uh, not but so, no. so what you're saying is we should be down in the two dollar range like we should cents, like 25 cents if we're gonna mm. no no so what what we talked about and i talked to him in a little bit more depth about it after jennifer brought it to my attention so what you want is some sort of equity when you're comparing and and but we don't have a funding source for this yet right, right. so my suggestion is first we've got to create a revolving fund at annual town meeting if we had the opportunity to do it at special i might consider it for special or consider asking you but it has to happen at annual uh, because we will receive over a period of time once we once we get into this system we will receive funds back from the, sy the system itself so a revolving fund makes the most sense to handle it but going forward we didn't have a funding source to start with. So initially the conversation was, well, we got to cover our costs. Right. Well, the, also the point is we need to make sure that we there's incentive. So his suggestion was make it equitable. Look at it as you're paying about 350 a gallon now for petrol. If you make it, if you lower the rate to 35 cents per kilowatt hour, you're within that equity range. And if you recall, Turner's did it at 30 cents per kilowatt hour. I would like, I just want to reach out to the woman in Greenfield that I met with that talked about this thing. It also has to do with the line that it's on. Like there, there's a certain charge that- I know. To that thing. And I'm not interested in subsidizing people to have electric cars. I mean, really they, they can afford to have a car. They can charge it at the house and we want to make a place for them to charge it downtown so people can charge it. But I it's not up to the residents to of Deerfield to be paying for somebody's electric car. So I just want to make sure it's- I hear you, but I wanted okay. you to hear the argument yeah. because yeah, it does make sense when you, when you compare it to oh, what you sure. would pay to put gas in your car. And that's a choice people got to make. And I think, um, but, well, but, uh, but I, I do want to talk about, um, I'd like to reach out to Carol again, because she explained what Greenfield went through when they picked their cost and and how much it really did cost and it was like an eye opening like oh my god yes. we're, we're losing our shirt on this thing so and i will tell you there's at least two other towns that are in the same situation because montague's discussion they ev eventually settled on 30 or 35 cents per kilowatt hour yeah. but it was similar to what you just described with carol so yeah. I just want this in, in front of you because I know energy resources will probably want you to revisit it anyway. So I wanted you to understand what we yep. figured out, the two of us, sure. Jennifer and I. Yep. So the other thing that I didn't think of to ask him was, I know that we have to pay for the, the system, but if we lower the rate 
that's just going to take how much longer for us to pay? Like what happens if, if we keep yeah. it? Well, the other thing is, is we keep it at 75 cents per kilowatt or yeah, per kilowatt yeah. and nobody uses it. What does that affect our paying them back also? Like what, what yeah. if nobody uses it? Then right. what? That's the yeah. reason they say you should balance your rate with to incentivize use. That's the reason. So yeah. that was one of the reasons I wanted you guys to talk about it because if we can't incentivize it, it doesn't do, it doesn't, the cost benefit of installing it isn't there. And ultimately that's, I think, where energy resources wanted it to be is to create the incentive so that people will, will yeah. use it. Well, then but we need to balance those needs. Right. And, and it's going to be a question for town meeting. Do they want to, does everybody else want to pony up money so people can have an electric car? And we can subsidize their filling up their gas tank. I mean, eventually it would pay for itself. It's just not going to pay for itself right away. And so the solution that my friend Andrea created in North Northfield was to, until such time as it was paying for itself, they funded a revolving fund, and that money helps with the monthly costs. Right. But it, you don't have to keep that revolving fund forever. Just it's just, it payment. allows you to capture the revenue because there will be revenue. That was yeah. the reason I thought that was a thoughtful way to do it yeah. because you are going to capture the revenue and eventually it'll balance itself. Yep. It's just, I'm we sure don't know what eventually means. Right. I'm sure there's a way there's, so we'll keep, I think well, we may have to stuff. eat it in the beginning just to incentivize it, I think is really where everybody's driving the bus. I have a hard time with that, but um, okay, <laughs> but I can be taught and learn, you know, I have a diesel, I so it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I, 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 I'll just, I'll reach out a little bit more and I'll learn more from you and we'll, we'll come back and revisit that for sure. Well, if you want, you know, if we, if it would be helpful, I'm happy. I reached out to the, I can't remember his name. Um, the gentleman that was assisting Montague and talked to him directly. I didn't reach out to Greenfield because they didn't know who to talk to. Yeah. But it exactly. may be worthwhile to circle that back around. Yep. Alex, Alex has something to say. I think I know what it is. Go for it. Jen, take it away. <laughs> he was just saying that uh, Jeff Bag in East Hampton knows all about it. And I used to work with him at Amherst. So I can reach out okay. to him. Cool, tag you're in, Jennifer. That'd be great. That'd be great. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay, so segue we'll, we'll, us to something else, right? What's that? Okay, can I make a point of interest here? Please. You're the chair. <laughs> you're, Just you're missing... remember, all the vehicles that are on the e charger are getting between ninety and one hundred twenty miles per gallon. Right. So you can't use the that same ratio there. So and just to remember Kevin, that. To Kevin's uh, credit, he says that, you know, and then what about the, the road repair tax? Yeah. So there, there's a lot of, yeah. And they're also getting subsidies to buy the car to begin with. So there's a, so there's, there's a lot of moving parts. It's just, is. I wanted you to Finding hear that, that argument for purposes yep. of consideration, because we do need to think about a, a wider view of this. Yeah, I agree with that. Yep. So we'll come back to that. Do you want to come back to it after yeah. we have more information? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. We don't have to set that today, right? Okay. But fairly you had already said it. We can change it at any yeah. time. Okay, good. Good. All right. <laughs> It sounds like we better. <laughs> yes. Job, uh, job description. So outreach coordinator, town clerk, treasurer, collector, uh, town assistant, town clerk, assistant treasurer, collector, et cetera, and stipends for approval. So do you want to- I thought I might have another job description, but I decided that was too much. You got a lot going on. I got a lot. So I also took several other job descriptions to the personnel board on Monday, and they- if you recall, Trevor, the Board of Oversight for South County Senior Center asked us to put the job out. Yep. So we went back to the job description that we had developed as part of the class comp study. And I reviewed it. I made some changes. Unfortunately, I don't have anybody really else to bounce it off of right this second. We can always make changes later. Yeah. yeah. But with a vacancy notice going out, we need to have a job description for reference. Yep. So the personnel board 
approved the version that you saw in your packet and yep. that's available on the select board meeting packet online. And so it really covers a wide variety and Anna Lee made this point on Monday, a wide variety of activities and is, is front facing. And so I, my response was, as she had said, you know, this really needs to be a much higher paid, you know, focused position. And my, my answer was right now it's a grant and yep. we don't know what's going to happen with it, but exactly. it may disappear. we do want to hire somebody. So we need to at least have a place to start. Yep. So I just wanted to let let everybody know that Annalise thinking about, you know, making sure that we can <laughs> focus on this at some point. I also did well. share the information from the Board of Oversight about matriculating this into the appropriation if necessary, considering that at least. So then, so I'm, I want to know, do you guys want to take individual votes if you're going to vote to approve them? Yeah, yeah. I Before mean, I spend too much time moving forward, do you want to know anything in particular about the job? Not that one. No, I'm good with that. I read through that. And, you know, it, it, it again, it's a grant position that we had a small amount of money for and we had it before the, the Board of Oversight, uh, Sunderland and Waitley want to go ahead and do this again. I think eventually this will uh, matriculate or um, morph into another position, you know, that, that can be funded long term. Um, but right now, that's not we don't have the money for that. So I think it's worth getting out there and just see if we can find somebody that can do this part time again. Um, and, and move on from there whenever we get the opportunity. So I'm good with the, uh, that one. Do you want to just do each one? Yeah, well, we can do I'll, each one. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, Senior Center Outreach Coordinator job description. Second. All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Sarah McDaniel. Dave, can you, can you hear the vote? Hi, David. Okay, thanks, David. Yes. Hey, thank you, David. Hi, David. I heard it. Yep, we got you. We got you. And then the next is the treasurer, collector, town clerk. Yeah, I can hear it. Okay, thanks, David. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, so as the treasurer, collector, town clerk, for, as you know, I mentioned actually splitting this out, and that yep. is a lift but it's not necessarily a lift that I think is unattainable. It just may not be a lift that happens right away. Right. So after some thought, and I had gone back and looked at this revised job description, it's in the new format. I got feedback from the outgoing treasurer collector town clerk yep. and made some adjustments based on her feedback. And what I would prefer that we do is at least accept the new format job description if we have to make adjustments later on, we can do that. But right now, I don't think we have enough information to do that. Right. Um, right. I would like to have it in play in case I have to throw a vacancy up. Yes. No, please. Yep. I'm, I'm good with that, too. Do you okay. want to vote for that, Casey, or just consensus? Um, well, you voted outreach, so you might as well vote yeah. this one, too. A motion to approve the treasurer, collector, town clerk job. Yeah. I'll second that. All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor. It's coming. Yeah. Hi, David. There it is. Yay. Yay. All it's right. It's the delay. <laughs> no. <laughs> For Dave. It's the delay. Um, let's see. So, uh, and then the the, this is the next job description is in draft format for the assistant treasurer collector, and then we also have assistant town clerk. You Correct. Want to talk about those a bit? Correct. And what I have to say with the assistant treasurer collector, I walked the personnel board through some of the questions they had. I presented the job description, but there was a point in that meeting because of the emergency select board emerge, uh, board of health meeting, I had to leave. Yep. So they had made a couple of additional grammar changes so this is the draft version assistant town clerk assistant treasurer collector that i received i never received and i asked lisa if she could send it to me i didn't receive the assistant town clerk revision um, so what i what i would like with the assistant treasurer collector again it's in the new format yep. it incorporates reference to 
and this was another clarity thing. It incorporates reference to performing the treasure collector duties in the absence of a seated permanent position, right, right? Which is in the guidance, but made sense to put in this particular these particular yeah. job descriptions because of the the levity or the the not levity, but the because of the the fact that they're very important and statutorily required. Yeah. So those were the, a couple of the things. The focus in many of the reviews that personnel board does is on the knowledge, skills, ability, and education. So we walked that through. And again, the outgoing treasure collector had reviewed both these job descriptions. And I incorporated her comments um some of them you know there were a couple of things that were in there that were kind of wordy so if it isn't verbatim comment it's meant to capture the essence of that and yeah. that was one thing i try to one thing i noticed with mary's review is she took a lot of the wordiness out of our job descriptions which i think is easier for people to understand yeah so whenever i i could see that the essence of something was captured, I didn't include a lot of words. So for the assistant treasure collector, um, there's a couple of things to remember that like the treasure collector and in our case, town clerk, um, you have to be able to, you either may be required for an assurity bond or you must be required to obtain a surety bond. And so I put may be required to obtain a surety bond um in the case of the assistant treasurer collector after some thought i think we should put in must be required to obtain a surety bond mm -hmm. like if you look at your packet um you'll see that that language is in the treasurer collector town clerk position i i think that's best practices recommended so i would just say yes go ahead okay I, mean, so, I think they have to yeah well I, they have to yes they have to but certain duties because you've got a cross training situation with assistant town clerk and assistant treasurer collector, certain duties don't necessarily all cross train, but I think for us, our own safety, I think we should actually change that from may be required to must be able to obtain surety bond on both those positions. Yeah. Okay. I, I agree. I, so I, that's, I, that's a change I'll make offline as long okay. as you guys approve that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, I believe Perfect. Tom thank you. Scan, I believe Tom Scanlon would recommend that. And I'm uh, sure he would. Yeah. I just was trying to parse through it and it it I thought about it and then I decided, you know, everybody in that sense, because you're collecting money and performing treasury activities, just everybody has to get one. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Um, <clears throat> so town clerk, the assistant town clerk position was the one that I didn't get all of their updates on. What I did do was we had looked through the knowledge and experience and education. And so my question for the board is, once I get that revised version, if it covers those topics, that particular area, I okay. would like to be able to incorporate anything personnel had in there that I think would be significant. Yeah. Um, so, would you give me the latitude to incorporate the comments that personnel board had for the job description if you approve it tonight yeah yeah I mean, okay. I'm, I'm fine fine. With this case. because yeah. they're very thoughtful in how they yeah. review these absolutely yeah. uh, absolutely okay so I'm, I'm fine with that too do you want to vote on that or do you for actually could you vote on assistant treasurer collector with as amended to read must be surety bonded or yeah. must obtain surety bond and assistant town clerk with the amendment amendments that come in from personnel board and must obtain surety bond so i'll, move make, for, I'll make oh okay you yeah. move I'll so move for both of those thank and you I'll second and i'll second carolyn second any further discussion okay. all those in favor hi, hi carolyn hi trevor McDaniel. No. Okay. I heard something. I did. 
All right. Thanks, Hi, Dave. Dave Wolfram. Great. Okay. Um, all right. So, so then we'd have the uh, stipends that we needed yes. to approve because I know we worked a little bit on that too. Um, we did, and I worked. I worked pretty closely with Brenda on that, okay. and sort of we we had had a conver I had had conversation individually with uh, both the assistant town clerk and the assistant treasurer collector, and so what we're requesting is a temporary pay adjustment effective January first until further notice yep. to compensate the assistant treasurer collector for the additional duties being performed because the treasurer collector isn't right seated. isn't a per, isn't permanently seated right now right. and the adjustment amount request is $34.58 per hour okay so it moves the grade it moves two grades actually but we think and we we thought about this carefully and looked back I'm at the budgets. Yep. Um, so we think this is a reasonable amount to yeah. expect based on this unanticipated increase in work. Right. And then the we also request a temporary pay adjustment of twenty seven sixty six to compensate the assistant town clerk for the additional duties right. beginning January 1st until further notice. And they all got their, um, I mean, they transferred a lot of the stuff. They're on the yes. check now on the bank yes. stuff. I mean, they've really taken over a lot of the tasks. And the reason we, done. the reason we talked about it this way in terms of January 1st is because that transition was, was started really right. boots on the ground the day right. that we walked back in the office. Right. And they had been doing a lot of training ahead of time before they, they were left as well. So they were, but they really that really ramped up. I noticed that um, this past week as Barb was leaving. And I know that that also leaves um, some funding in case we need outside help in the meantime for for something that that maybe they can't attack right away. It leaves us a smidge of funding, and that was the intent. Right. Um, because we may need to hire Dude. somebody to assist them if right. necessary. Now. Trevor, I, I, David actually knows this directly, but I did ask Tom Scanlon if he can think of somebody, if we do need help, if right. he can help us figure that out. Right. Um, the only suggestion I would make is that we have an expiration date of a year from now, um, only because, or sooner, um, you know, when this is all resolved, is yeah. because what happened in another department is we, um, when this, you know, this department had left, we gave a stipend for additional duties to somebody, and then we forgot to remove yeah. it. And so that person just kept that stipend for, I mean, I'm not saying- No, no, I, that's a great comment, Carolyn. And I remember what you're talking about. It's a lot of moving parts and it's hard to go back. It's and hard to keep, yeah. Want, so so no, how about until a permanent replacement is found for each Regardless of how we hire it, until we have a permanent town clerk and a permanent treasure collector, no matter what that looks like. Right, whether it's one person yeah. or one person oh, no, who's most fine. Or two people. Okay. But the only reason I was going to put a date on it, and um, or a year, say yeah. permanent or a year from now, because you can certainly extend it if yeah. you don't put a certain out in the year. But then, because it's not authorized beyond this year. Right. Okay. And with that one year. Because if you just say till replacement, that doesn't really fix it. Yeah. Because it might still re forget. Yeah. You know? So if you say until ter permanent replacement or a year, whichever is less. Which can be extended. Can yeah. Be, hopefully then, we're not we in that position I mean, in a year. Hopefully <laughs> in a year we'll get this sorted out. But so I, you want it to say until a permanent replacement or a year? Yeah. Whichever, whichever is in. less. You know, I mean, whichever happens first. In other words, if the permanent replacement comes or the year comes, because when we come to the year, we don't have a permanent replacement or we're not satisfied with the permanent replacement, we will just extend the stipend. You see what I'm saying? Just to I, I, I want a date in there because we say, when you say permanent, well, you know, we did hire somebody permanently and we forgot. Yeah. So, I mean, it was okay. not, it wasn't adjusted in the payroll. So I, I just want to make sure because it affects payroll, it affects retirement, the whole thing. You know? Right. 
And so that's why we're talking about a temporary pay increase. Yeah. Um, it does represent an increase of two grades. And but it also does represent recognition of the additional work and the additional yeah. responsibility and duties that, you know, just the the breadth of what has to be done. Yeah. The other request related to this, and it's related to helping in the office itself is would the board consider a temporary pay adjustment for of sorry of the hourly rate of 3927 for the town accountant budget director to perform in an advisory capacity for the financial department not related to treasury duties right because she can't be related to right because she can't be um, I, I would go ahead Karen. I was just going to say, is that going to be enough, though? I mean, I we have to pay attention to uh, making sure that. I th think uh, it is. Well, here's what we can do. We can revisit it. I right. can revisit it with Brenda, but this was the number that the she and I landed on. And I oh, think that, okay. Yeah, that's I fine. think it makes that's sense. And it's, you know, it's also yeah. recognizing like she, she has taken on a whole lot more of that budget and I don't, you know, and, and she's doing that before J July 1st. Um, so I think, I think it does make sense to, you know, to help offset a lot of the extra work she has been taking on in this transition, overseeing some of that office and, you know, supervisory role, and they'll be able to come to her with questions well, and stuff. And, and they are, and that's, yeah. that's really useful. Because I, I think it I helps just, her feel like she's part of that team too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just my problem is that we we have had the luxury of having a wonderful group and, yes. and no issues. Right. No right. I mean collections every year, are top every, notch. right. Every year our audit recommendations are like zero. None. Are because none. they run such a tight ship. Yes. Right. So, and that was the compliment that Tom Scanlon gave yeah. last week, and I will reiterate it. They there all a run a, such a tight ship, it makes it easier for us to get the appropriation work done in the budget season. Yeah. Well, it gives us a better rate of loans. It gives us, you know, yep. I mean, we know what's going on all the time. Yeah, we have money my, coming. My in. issues, right, my issues is I don't want anything to mess that up. And we can't yep. afford to lose Brenda. So I just, yep. if she's fine with Right. That, and yep. so we talked about that. Yeah. Okay. So, so if the board would approve 3458 for the assistant treasurer collector, 2766 for the assistant town clerk, and 3927 for the town accountant budget director in temporary pay adjustments mm -hmm. based on the conversation. The previous two until a permanent permanent replacement is hired or a year, whichever is less. Yeah. Um, that would help us move along a little bit so that we can start looking at yeah. the fundamentals, short term and long term in the department. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'll, I'll make that motion. Oh yeah, that's yep. what I meant to say. I'm getting tired, guys. <laughs> it was exciting. As of January first. Sorry, As I missed January that part. January first. Yes. We. Yep. Yeah, we we're aware of that. All right, so Trevor made the motion. I will second that. I meant to say <laughs> all those Thank in you. favor or any yeah, other Carolyn. discussion, any other discussion. No, uh, all those in favor, Carolyn, Trevor, yeah. we'll wait for David because I know he can hear it. It sounds like a mouse. That's Casey. It's me typing. Oh, I have the loudest yeah. keyboard ever. I am so sorry, people. It's okay. But I type these you're so really I can working. remember. It sounds like you're playing Legos over there, Casey. No, I'm saying Dave. He sounds like a mouse. Oh, there. No, that's not Dave. Um, no. Okay. Dave, do you make a, a vote? He, I think I heard him. You know, he could come. Uh, he could yeah. go to the town hall and go into the conference room with a computer. <laughs> no. We're almost done. Yeah, I know. Nope. Well, I not really, but well, we'll yeah, keep it moving. Yes. yes, thank you, David. We'll thank keep it moving. David. Yes. The other, the other items were placeholders. We have annual uh, other permits to approve. I don't think we have anything. That's tonight. probably what I. Should. That's what I'm going to do next time. All right. I'm not going to do this at home anymore. No, 
uh, the other placeholder was for purchase and sale agreement for new pro, which were not there yet. Uh, we're close, but not there yet. The other were appointments. Um, it was a placeholder appointments assistant town clerk as burial agent. Did we do that already? I thought we did that. Remember, we need to revise it so it should say the assistant town clerk oh, okay. acts as the burial agent. I make that motion that the assistant town clerk be the burial agent um, for us at this point. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? I Carolyn. Instead of interim. Instead of interim. Yep. 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 And uh, I Trevor McDaniel. David did too. So um, then we have. Hi, Dave. Uh, thank you, Dave. Thank then you, we, Dave. Then we have. Um, we have some anticipated stuff coming up, but we have public comment period. And I just wanted to, oh, I just wanted to read this real quick as well. Um, this is our public comment procedures for Select Board Board of Health. So to provide the Select Board meetings attendees the opportunity to share information with the board and to ensure the ability to conduct business in an orderly manner, the following procedures will be used at all meetings. Uh, one, the presiding chair or designee shall determine the length of the public participation segment. Speakers will be allowed uh, two minutes to present their materials. The presiding chair or designee may uh, permit extensions of this time limit. Um, topics for discussion will be limited to those under the authority of the select board and all remarks will be addressed to the presiding chair or designee of the meeting. So do we have any public comment tonight? Anybody like to say anything? Oh, Annalise hands raised. Hey, Annalise. <laughs> And I, I will be quick, maybe even shorter than two minutes, although I'm, I'm seeking some guidance here. Okay. Um, the planning board has been really excited to hear this like board talking about being interested and supportive of a planner for Deer, Deerfield. And certainly that was uh, tied into the conversation earlier tonight about the grant writer. Um, certainly a planner could work on initiatives as well as um, well, write and administer grants and um, relieve the burden on town staff. I'm not too sure how we might proceed. Um, I have had some consultation with um, town administrator, um, understanding that a planner could um, either be a, um, a, a consultant or a town employee. And we are approaching the uh, January 24th deadline for budgets. So um, I, I'd like to be able to move, nudge this forward a little bit, but looking for your guidance on kind of how to go about this. <laughs> so uh, I'll just, um, thank you for your comment. I'll just say that, um, it's a it definitely a priority of ours, and I think um, the real key is how do you pay for it. So, and and what account does it come under? You know, I know the schools are going to be um, budgets are going to be tough this year. You know, they had zero growth for a couple of years or a year or so, very little growth last year. So this year, I think is going to be a um, quite a doozy. So I'm, I'm curious to see how the budgets lay out and how um, what we have for for growth and kind of free cash and like what um can, can we take on i talked a lot about um you know an override the other day but it was just kind of tongue-in-cheek to say hey we really need to think about how we're running our town and and to do a full reset i know carolyn's strongly against doing one of those um as no, no, i know only if it's it's a one-time right exactly and, and not, so we, not a recurring i mean yes and this allowing is allowing us to spend more money without fixing whatever right. is wrong. So, well, that's what I'm saying. We really need to have a wholesale look at okay. this. And I almost think there, you know, who needs another meeting, but I think that there needs to be some time where we come together and think about our revenue, our expenses, and just have the operations. It's instead of just saying, oh, we, we need a planner and we're going to stick this position in. We got to really kind of come together and go do, can we afford it? I, I think we can somehow if, um, if we're much more effective in, in utilizing grants and uh, we have money coming in, you can support that position uh, by by doing the projects that the, that the community is asking for and wants done. So I, I think it, it, it's one of those things that if it's if it's explained well to to town meeting they people will understand and, and get it. But it's I do think it 
there does need to be work and it, it does take a lot of time to kind of put that together. So I'm not, I mean, as we think about budgets this year, we, we really need to figure out, can we afford that? And is it first a contracted position for a year through contracted services and then, or, or part-time as we start to grow into this thing and then see, okay, here's a plan. This is how we could make it you know, full time. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm wondering if I could, if it would make sense just as a placeholder prior to those conversations uh, to have it as a contracted service within uh, the planning board budget. And then maybe we can certainly, I would certainly want to yeah. have a lot more conversations prior to talking to the finance committee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, that was actually one of the things that I was hoping to resolve at the MMA, because number one, you network with people and you figure out is there any possibilities we could do a shared shared person with multiple communities? You start those conversations like yeah. you go out to dinner, but you know we were all getting nervous about going out to eat together. And normally that's how we get our business going. And yeah. um, so I don't know how we're gonna have those conversations because you know we're that meet with the MMA canceled. You know that gives us like no network opportunities. Um, I mean, I'm going to see Tom uh, fight and Kevich on Friday at the Vax bus, but yeah, maybe, you know, I'll, I'll talk to him and see, you know, or I can call Steve Ellis and see if Montague's right. interested. I mean, I can check again with Furcog yeah. also and see right. if you have thought of um, you see there. if there's any more other towns um, yeah. in Italy, because normally what we try to do is get together as like a whole group of us. Yeah and um, in our area. And then we, you know, we talk about all these different things that we're trying to solve. And then we come up with, you know, possibilities to pursue. And, you know, you, when you talk to people, you see what the depth of interest is. And I think there's a huge depth of interest. I mean, number one, we've got to get Dave connected with us somehow so we can have a conversation yeah. with the planning board and all three of us, because. Dave has been a huge supporter and has a vision on this planner Absolutely. person right from yep. the beginning. So, yep. um, but, you know, I've only talked to like two or three other people and I, I think it has to be a geographic or a more common um, re reason to pull us together because I, I, I don't think if we there was a couple of people that I had talked to up like in the hill, hill towns. I just don't think it's going to work because we're just too different of community. Right. I mean, I, so, I think we've got to do the stick to the I-91 corridor is, is what my impression <laughs> is so far. Um, and then we got to figure out, well, do we have to geographically spend, send time in Frank, in Franklin County? Can we jump down and do it with Hatfield? Cause there seems to be an interest, you know, with, some, that kind of community so um i i don't so, know what well, um you know well, what the possibilities are so i think um just to keep this is public comment and not a full-fledged discussion i i do think um it uh, we're on the same page and and we hear you and want to find a way yeah. to do that so yes sorry let, let's know, keep going on that's, that's, no. yeah it's, okay. i know it's a it's a long discussion for sure okay. but we hear you and we got to find a way and i i that is a good thought to, you know, to put it into your budget and, and have, and then start, and then we would support that and figure out a way. Okay. So how do we, how do we do that? You know, flesh yeah, flesh it out. So, okay. Thank you. Annalee, thank you, Annalie. Thank you for bringing it up. And yep. um, I, I guess everybody, Dave um, is hearing, will, is hearing us saying that we want you to put it in your budget to start off. Yeah. Okay. We'll and then I'll see if I can put some muscle behind it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, any other public comment? Do you see anything, Jennifer? No? Um, <coughs> so we have uh, a couple unanticipated um, items on the agenda, which is the South County Senior Center Director position, and we have um, HR 3821, uh, an act creating municipal and public safety building authority testimony and discussion. So I can hit on that a little bit too, but we'll first start with a senior center um, director position. Casey, do you want me to talk about that or do you want to? Okay. So we, um, we were I'm happy to chime in anytime, you know, that. yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't need you to. So, um, uh, Kate, we, uh, the select board at la our last meeting had, uh, had authorized 
uh, Casey to enter into a negotiation with uh, Carolyn Ford to to um, see if they could come to terms on a um, you know pay and and job and if she'd want to you know take the position and and they were unsuccessful in having that negotiation pan out to anything that was um, resembling her working for us so um, we thank her for you know for for her time and applying and wish her all the best and um, I believe that uh, this the um, Board of Oversight had our intention were to offer it to um, to Jennifer Remillard if that negotiation didn't work um, and and but there <laughs> was some discussion whether that actually happened or not but I think that was the intention of all of us and I know um, Casey speaking with the other board members had um, I think that was their intention as well so um, I was going to make a, a recommendation to this uh, select board. Oh, go ahead, Jen. You have your hand up. Has has a message or something on it? I've never seen that. Have you seen that, Casey? What? No. It says no. I think you might have hit the wrong button or something there. Uh oh, did we get zoom bombed and we didn't know it? No, no. That's just. I think no, David might have. Under the reactions, it might have, because you, oh. you can hit, instead of raise your hand, you can hit a button. Oh, it is a reaction. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't I even know that, that Trevor. Is. I haven't done that yet. <laughs> so, um, that, either. That, oh, was, yeah. that was me. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> so I just wanted to. No, that was me. All right. Uh, so I wanted to make a recommendation to the select board here that we offer yeah. the position to Jennifer Remillard and if she's interested in, um, or, or, or to, um, empower yeah. Casey, Casey Warren to yes. enter into discussions if Jennifer is still interested in in the position and, and see if they can come to terms on a agreement so that would be my motion is to to uh, to offer um Casey Warren the ability to negotiate with Jennifer Remillard if she's still interested in the position and I would um second that motion cool and, uh, and we have a yes from David, it looks like. <laughs> that might be a good way to communicate. <laughs> I love that. We just have to recognize that David has a check David mark. Is using his, uh, his reactions to vote. Um, <laughs> so, uh, okay, so so I, I would love that that, that could happen. And um, I'm really anxious. Uh, I'll vote to hear yes. That. Okay, so um, we got a thumbs up from David. And um, all those in favor, I, Trevor McDaniel, Carolyn okay. Ness said yes. And David says yes as well. So. Uh, great. So Casey, let us know how that goes. And I hope hope that's fruitful. I will let you know. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, the second item is HR uh, 3821. Again, this is a, a, a bill in the house that um, that Natalie Blay is working on. And there's there's some text and stuff in your packet. And it has to do with um, Nat uh, Natalie trying to develop a lot like um, we have a library and a school building authority um, where they there's grant funded money that could get that could come to towns if they you know like when we did our school roof or we're going to build the school or do the library uh, you know you get a portion of that grant money from the state to do a project like this i have signed up to testify it was going to be i think the 11th but i think it's moved to maybe the 26th now um just to in support of this bill and and so again it's a, it's an act creating a municipal and public safety building authority and then funding it with some money uh, that they, that then could help communities um, build public safety buildings um, and municipal buildings, you know, police stations, fire stations, town halls, that kind of thing. We are certainly in the need. My my um, comment will be that the amount is is low. It's a million dollars, yes. right? So that I, I mean, my I testimony is say, like woefully you need to put inadequate. It up to at least five. Yes, okay? exactly. All right, so. I put this, I asked Casey to put this on because of it being, um, I mean, I just have had no opportunity to put anything together, but if you're going to, if you're going to testify, that's fabulous. Yep. yep I will. So if you could testify that a million is ridiculously low yes. yep. in this um, building market. So yep. you have to raise at least five, 10 would be yep. better. Yep. And then um, I was hoping if you were, uh, cause you got to do it, you got to speak, you only get two or three minutes. Mm -hmm. So um if you were going to um you know as you're working on your speech could you just outline a quick letter based on your testimony yep. give it to casey so that we could send a signed copy in for um as sure. a board all three of our um, signatures would send in a permanent um 
uh, written yeah. testimony? Because I mean, it's good to have the voice testimony, but you also yeah. should always have a written yeah. submission. And since we're going to apply for that, and we want more than a, mi I mean, million. Like, yeah, I mean, you only get what? Uh, I mean, if it's got a million bucks, I think you only get was it half of that, right? Or is it? Are they saying no, they'll no, get a million? It'll be a two million dollar project. You yeah. got to You for every dollar, you got to at least match it. But yeah. two million dollars is not even a practice. No. I mean, what you need at least go for two four to do dollars? a building, right? Yeah. So, um, I mean, at four hundred dollars per square foot, is is what people are using. Then, um, I mean, really, really ridiculous low low ball. It's worthless. So if we say five to ten. And then we we put that in our letter, and then we turn around and we make sure we're first in line. Yeah, I appreciate. Oh, Trevor, that is so nice oh. that you're going to take the time to do that. Yeah, I, I, I did it. Yeah, you're it, Jennifer. Bill. Yeah, I did it on another bill, and uh, it, it was really nice to just be there with people, and didn't take too long. It's easy to do. So, um, okay, uh, let's see. Any other business before the board? I who have a hand up from Casey. You have a town, oh yeah, I did I skip the town administrator report? No, it actually wasn't that. It's actually a vote. I wanna I just realized something. When I was looking at the agreement with Amherst, mm -hmm. um, it's got you all as signatories on on it. Yes. Um, do you want to use the signature stamps on that? Yeah, based yeah. on or code. do you want to yeah, have it at least one person yeah. sign it? Listen. I didn't come in to get my packet tonight. I'm doing it off the stupid computer. So I'm not coming in to sign something. Although stamp, stamp I'm- Stamp is fine. I'll be in, but you can stamp too. Okay, so I'll stamp Carolyn and David and you can come sign, Trevor. Yeah, all right. That's all awesome. right, I just wanted to catch that. Yeah. I am, I am gonna make an appointment with, um, I guess next week with, um, I'll have to be next week with Jennifer to do this sign up of the, MMA because I, yeah. I, I want to make sure that we're getting credits. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll get we'll get through that. I'm sure they'll list all that. Yeah. Out. I know they yeah. were going to send an email email to everybody. So yeah, but it's it's so darn hard to get on and yeah. We'll I figure mean, that out. Yeah. No, I need I need some help with that because I re I really had a hard time last year. Yeah. Okay. I wasted so much time fussing about it and being panicky about it. I can also come over to your place and wear a mask if that if yeah. better about that, Karen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can bring in my computer. Yeah. It just I, I just have to have this the stuff set up. Yeah. They're Part gonna send you are, links to yeah. each one of those items. Yeah, yeah we gotta pick which one and um, right. And we, we gotta make sign sure, up for right. It. And we're only gonna get credit for each one, we, even if right. we're both going, yeah. you know, yes. one. So yeah. we have to get a spread of of the ones. Too. Yeah, we were talking about that, Carolyn. But there are a couple that I would like to go to. Yeah, that yeah maybe no, other okay. people will. Just because yeah. I need to know further down the line. Yeah, no, Casey, it's, it's fine. Welcome. It's fine. That's it's just that I want to make sure, especially if they spread it out over multiple days. So, because a lot of times the best ones mm -hmm. are are Friday morning, and you can only go to one or two Friday right. morning. Right, and, and so you have to decide which missing. ones you're going to go to. But if yeah. they spread them out over two or three, like to that means we can actually them. go to more of them. But I just want to make sure that we're absolutely getting credit for our insurance policy because, like I said, I know I got I didn't get they they wouldn't let me check the second one, and it could have been because last year because Trevor may, might have signed up for it. Yeah. For me, and they would only give Deerfield credit for one. Yeah. Right. Even though both of us were going, so yeah. I, I hope that that was it, and then we ended up getting our full credits. But who knows? Okay. Well, they did list them, and actually, Jennifer and I were looking at them and talking to Denise about you know spreading that out because we've done that for so many years, Carolyn that I knew you were gonna to wanna to do that. So we sort of were trying to pick things that we had interest in, but that we thought could, you know, so that everybody's doing one, not not the same thing, but one thing. We just didn't know where you guys were gonna fall down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we just, I mean, we try to talk about it and make sense of it, but um, I mean, again, whatever we can draw in, it's, I'm, I'm more concerned about this, you know, the interface with the agencies, you know, the state people. That's tougher. Yeah, I mean, 
that was like a bomb last year i'm telling you that was i think i talked to one person did yeah. you talk to actually anyone so i only I talked to two so i mean it's easy to connect with the vendors but we're not we don't have any money to give to vendors right. so i don't want to talk to the vendors i want to talk to the state people yeah and that's a great point to bring up to the mma yeah I know. I, I because we all have the capability to remote in if there's specific things we should be able to set up meetings yeah i know well maybe you or jen could send that yeah. off to the mma and ask them because that was really problematic last it year. was and and that's why i'm really i mean i was willing to be you know go to boston and risk stuff and and you know that's why i asked if we had enough money in our credit card to have room service because <laughs> i really wasn't <laughs> excited about going to the you know restaurant no i'm not taking my mask oh, off i haven't going? been into a I haven't been factory anywhere since 2020 march of 2020 cheesecake factory is the best place. cheesecake factory i'm with you oh, man. <laughs> i'd risk it for cheesecake <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can you can take it back. Take to away cheesecake, yeah, Trevor. Take away right. cheesecake. You do not have to I eat it. Take it back there. to the room. It was always but good. But I um, but I'm really you know last year, I, like we'll I said, I out. talked to the one person last year, and I I. I we'll figure it out. We'll get a state person. Yeah. We'll get it going. Um, K Casey, did you um want to hit on anything from? I'm sorry, I skipped right over your town administration. How long do you have? I got a lot. I know. <laughs> All right. Oh. So I just want to give people an overview of what's going on that that I've been working on with other staff and that other staff are working on. And I want to thank, first of all, I want to thank Jennifer, Alex Hershenretter, Alex White, and Pat for their support because things are ramping up in the office and it's been very busy. Yep. I also want to thank Super Lot. She's been helping with planning board and zoning and conservation commission. And again, we're starting back into the uptick of stuff going on. Yep. Um, but the the things that are underway is there's a lot of personnel work. There's policies, uh, development of a manual, job descriptions, and further work on the class comp that's going to be based on budget changes. Um, we have operational hiring that's going on. Wastewater treatment plants are the ones sort of right in your radar screen, but we now have to figure out town clerk treasure collector. Um, we will have to start working on an outreach coordinator, continue on figuring out the senior center director. Um, so we've had a lot of things in that particular realm that also doesn't count any HR stuff. Okay. Um, we have con we have a lot of contacts or a lot of contracts to deal with. We've got legal, we've got litigation, we've got just things that require us to confer with counsel. So we have CBAs, we have two host community agreements in play, um, litigation in play. So that takes time in terms of meetings. There's a lot of meetings that go on in the background. Um, the financial department, we really need to take some time and sort of suss that out. So I did reach out to Tom Scalen and I will continue to work with Brenda and Tom and and Sarah and Jen and, you know, try to sort of look at things because I think it would be really useful for us to get definitely Tom's perspective, but yeah. also Sarah and Jen's perspective are going to be very important because right now they're in the crunch of it. Yeah. Um, we have projects that I've de I've delegated. Um, Jennifer's going to start transitioning to doing bills payable okay. because that's part of the budget administration that she's not sure she wants to do, but <laughs> she needs to get trained. <laughs> and it would be helpful for me to know that that's in a stable orbit. So she's actually working directly with Brenda. Right. Um, she's also. Um, I'm sending her to HR training. I'm also sending Kevin to HR training um, just to, for them to get a flavor of what some of the programs that MMA helps with, like yeah. supervisory leadership development courses that will start relatively soon. It's not a hefty ask in terms of price, but I think it could pay back in benefits. Yeah, for sure. Um, the website transition, Jennifer's working on that. And if you want to give them a brief update, go for it, Jennifer. Sure. So I've been having weekly updates with uh, Civic Engage about our transition and um, just 
images, what kind of function we want our website to have for the public, for us in the office. Um, started this week when I'm going to send out an email to all departments asking for their help to eliminate any old, outdated, unused um, links, information, anything on the website. So everybody will just do a purge of yeah. that because there's only a certain amount of information that our contract is to transfer um, that they'll do. We'll have the capability of transferring things later, but that would be staff training and yep. time to do that. Uh, I'm planning on, I don't even know if I mentioned this to you, Casey, but i um, planning to go to a local town, ask them if I could see how it actually works. Yeah. That module great. with their staff, because, you know, somebody who's selling it to you. Oh yeah. I'll tell oh, you all the roses. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. And, um, and if we can get ahead of the game on that, um, that would be better. So I want to see if, um, maybe Pat or some, the clerk's office is treasurer's office is pretty busy at the moment, but if somebody wants to go with me and we can actually ask these questions of yeah. how the function works, like payments and a great idea and all of that. So, um, I'm planning on doing that. So it's, you know, it's targeted and we have a very strict schedule. They've already pushed us out because we were a little late on one meeting, um, yeah. but it, it's, it's rolling forward. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. And then we've got sort of special projects going on. So the stamp, the town administrators in Franklin County had a meeting with the COG today to explore some of the areas of interest that have come up in the recent, I want to say about the last year, that includes ARPA. And we had a brief on ARPA and the COG is exploring some sort of shared service concept, whether it's town to town or shared services with the COG to do some of that ARPA reporting in particular, because it's very heavy. And so I have a slideshow when I get it, I will, I think I have it, but I wasn't able to pass it out. When I get a chance, I will forward you the slideshow just so you can look at it. I love that. And we're gonna circle back around so that we can further discuss it, depending on what other folks wanna be doing. And there was, I want to say at least 20 of us on the meeting, either a representative from a town, a town administrator or the coordinators. Um, so we're very interested in seeing how we can combine what we have for resources to make it a little bit easier on all of us, because right. we know it's a heavy lift, regardless of whether we get someone else, Carolyn. Yeah, we need to not leave any stone unturned if possible in case something doesn't work out. Yeah. So, but no, other special right. projects that are in front of us are the EV charger, street lights, the CCI goals. So working closely with Denise and Jennifer on that. Um, budget prep. Yeah. So normally we're gonna, your budgets are con gonna come before you on the 26th. We'll have done some work on them, but we're gonna have to discuss it. Yep. Um, the North Main Street Park is takes up time. Um, Jennifer was, working through the scope of work for the peer review just so you know Anna Lee, that's gone out we're waiting to hear responses right. um and i thank her for that work on that because it's kind of a lift it's sort of hard to pivot when you don't know what it should look like and neither one of us did <laughs> so physically a paper request yeah. what should this look like so i thank her for her help with that um this nurse transition and we're looking, because of some of the things that are going on in here, I think we should take some time, since we're in the middle of a, of a sort of evaluation of the financial department and clerk's office, there's some administrative reorganization that could happen over here. So I've been discussing that and we'll continue to sort of take everybody's temperature on it and try to present a plan because if it may be useful to do that, Okay. So these are some of the things in front of me, and that's not necessarily the daily work of just dealing with email and requests for updates and that sort of thing. So it's, a um, it, it's I just want people to understand that I don't I don't stand here and do nothing. I had 12 meetings last week. 
So, and that's not counting the ones that were internal. <laughs> I know. I also noticed that you were at work at six thirty this morning. Yeah. What are you watching the cameras? And then left. Oh, I and then did leave York. last night until late. Because he was watching the cameras. Yeah. No, I'm <laughs> hey, at least you let me get make coffee. <laughs> Yeah, my husband texted me and goes, where are you? <laughs> I'm at work, dear. So, yes, I just, there were some things I wanted to get done this morning and I needed it to be quiet. So. I know. But I, try, I try my hardest to kick people out. Yeah. She, she does a good job. She's, she does a really good job. Yeah. What she needs to do is kick me back behind my desk. <laughs> Which she's doing a good job of. And to go home. 15, 15 hour days is too long. Don't look in my payroll sheet then. Yeah, oh, I know. I know. It's wicked bad. No, it's just there's work to get done and sometimes it needs to be in a quiet space. And yeah. so I said one of the administrative sort of thoughts I've had is how to deal with that um, on a regular basis. Because if we don't have time to really get get some of that lift up, like literally get some of that work done when it's quiet and we're not interrupted. Yeah. It doesn't just affect me. It yeah. affects Jennifer as well, specifically in our office, but I know it affects Sue and Pat and, you know, other people around here, certainly the clerk's office, because there's some concentration that's required in a lot of our work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be thoughtful about that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, thank you for all you do. Thank you for everybody. I know it's I recognize. I know, and different. Alex. Oh, no, I think everybody. You guys, you guys do a ton of work behind the scenes as well, and so everybody should recognize how many meetings you guys are in, yep. because wow. I know Trevor and I pass in the hallway when he's coming in and out of meetings. So yeah. we really appreciate the fact that you're out there doing, you know, as much or more in some cases. Causing more work for you. <laughs> I was just gonna well, say we yeah. had that conversation. Yes, Trevor. we have. Yeah. You don't. You don't want me to keep going to meetings. No, no I don't want you to keep going to meetings. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Alex, for stepping up. You've been great. Um, oh no, it's really nice I, to get I, reports and and check ins from you, and um, it's it just very pleased. So thank you. I, very I, much. I am so thankful that we have Alex on board. Um, I have to say, it's just it's been overwhelming. Uh, you know, you start in the morning at, you know, I turn on my computer and I'm on the computer at 7 a.m. And I mean, I'm going all night and I, it yeah. just, it's an all day thing and it's constant, constant on the phone or computer yeah. emails and um, having Alex like make sure that we just have the VAX bus and confirming with the VAX bus. And then we had the problem where they didn't have enough vaccinators. They just cut the vaccinators, but they didn't cut the flow. And yeah. So we have all these people. So, you, you know, Alex is on, we, they got seven vaccinators coming. They got seven vaccinators coming. And, yeah. you know, he's checking on that and making sure we don't have these screw ups. And yeah, it's great. I mean, it's, it's huge, great it's huge. And he's getting us, you know, making sure we're in line for, you know, the by next tests and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, this is huge because it's, it's not costing us money, but you know, we, we've got to keep the government working. We've got to keep local town hall going. We've got to keep our highway crews going. Yeah, we've got to you know, help hard. people, help our businesses. And these I mean, ice storms have huge. been miserable yeah. too. that are coming at or horrible hours and it's really hard to get out there. And a flash freeze on people that last week was really tough. I know. So everybody's really ready for a break. I know. <laughs> but I, yeah. Warm Any, weather's coming, guys. Speaking of breaks, couple months. we're closed on, just so everybody, yes. you know, Open in Monday. meetings knows, uh, Monday is uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Yes. So, so go do some. We will not be service. here. Yes. So good. Good stuff. Um, I'm going to do my laundry and I'm vacuuming. All right. <laughs> work. My husband will be happy. <laughs> Anything it's amazing how that works. Else? Any other business <laughs> no. we need to attend to? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I make that motion. I'll second that motion. And we'll see a thumbs up from David in about three minutes. There oh, it is. Oh, he's quick. Is. He's quick now. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. When it's adjourning. <laughs> Thank you, David.